using that or you want plastic? No, I'm yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna be sure about my drinking glass. That's okay. I'm eating on mic. So this is not podcast one hundred, this is regular beer reviews. Um we're just waiting for people to come in. You got a link to that? Did you no. tweet a link? I'll find out if people show up. There they are. Okay. Let me turn the I'm tweet a link to my small portion of followers compared to yours. <laughs> turn the camera just a little bit toward Tom. As you should. Obviously. Is that good? It's fine with me. I think I look good. As usual. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't do an audio test. Well, no. I just put every uh, how do we sound? These mics hear what's in front of them, so you kind of go at them like old timey radio style. I think I was farther this back way. last time and it got me okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'll work. All righty. So, welcome to regular beer reviews, the uh, game where I try not to drink too much and <laughs> I'm batting zero on this. Although, tonight, these folks are drinking uh, to state this stage left. Ben? Are we still? Yeah. Yes. This yeah. would be stage left. You're okay. facing. I thought you were introducing me. Left. Yeah. So stage left Audience is right. Ben. Do we do last names or just Ben? Good. Ben McAwee. Okay. I listed you as Ben Toyota. <laughs> ben Toyota. Yeah. yeah. And Toy I'm, Toyota. I'm Tom Mix from Tom Mix Drinks. You may know Tom Tom as the host of the Mucky Duck Weekly Quiz in Ames, Iowa. That's right. Um, did a remote show last night from parents backyard it went very well we had a very good team hey you guys were pretty good we didn't do bad no. ryan got most of them oh no no you're like it was you and i think uh tom's mom has got quite yeah. a bit of like some stuff my mom plays every week it's very sweet <laughs> so ubane pie says what did i miss you didn't miss nothing we just started so let's get right into it um these guys know beer uh, ben, are you allowed to talk about what you do? Yeah, I work for Boston Beer Company, parent company of Sam Adams, Truly, Twisted Tea, Angry Orchard, a few others, but I don't really know beer. I work entirely on the other side, on the supply chain side, but uh, but I, I drink beer. <laughs> and have access to quite a large sampling yeah. of the product line, yeah. and including stuff that isn't out yet or technically out yet or, or out in certain areas. Okay. Yeah. Some of it's kind of new to market or otherwise only in certain States, mm -hmm. but we brought up a, a Noah's Ark of beer tonight that we're going to go through. <laughs> and to my far left, uh, doctor yeah, of uh, chemical beer. engineering, Cornell currently research and teaching. Yep, professor at Iowa State yeah. University. Yep, and uh, certified BJCP beer judge. So I know some things about beer. <laughs> I know sciencey things about beer. And I'm putting food in me because beers. I didn't get a chance to do it yet. You're mm -hmm. just eating vegetables. I'm eating and chewing on Mike because um, this if is my party and I get this... to make these noises if I want to. Oh my god! If I were listening to this, I'd be so mad. Oh, people are listening with their headphones on. Oh. Like Nick no, Mullen no. does it. If Nick Mullen Just can do it, I can do chewing it. Chewing on the microphone. Yeah, like yeah, I'm like deliberately getting closer to the microphone. To eating eat. the mic like NPR style, put yeah. food in your mouth. Yeah. It's a good combo. You really gotta get the crunch. I'm Terry Gross. I'm gonna gross you out with the sound of food going in my pussy. Terry Gross. Remember, oh my god. Do you remember when, when <laughs> Terry Parks Gross Rec, would never <laughs> Parks and Rec did those awesome like send ups to public radio? Yeah. Yeah. They were fantastic. All right. This is more like Crazy Ira and the douche. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who invented taint ball. <laughs> so. All right. I want to. I want to follow the chat. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to follow your stream here. Regular. You don't have to wait. I am about to. Yeah. All right. Super so. Chat. In the event super chat happens, I will keep it. Uh, keep it. Uh, keep it. Uh, keep it. Uh, eye on it. What did I? Oh, I. That's oh right. God. We were talking about lactose, and I had a bunch of cheese at my parents' house because I got to eat stuff out of the fridge. Well, and so that's probably it. You just gathered cheese. Well, there's not. My parents are away in Florida, so I just went over. There's stuff to eat, but like non-perishables, and there was an entire bag of individually wrapped like airplane, like <laughs> sample 
cheeses the size of a school yeah. school eraser. I bring that stuff into work. Oh yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. Good. It's like the the standard farms sort of mm. stuff, and I'm like, well, I have this, and I have pita chips, and I have red beet eggs. Time to make a feast out of this. And I was looking for coffee, but all there was was like Taster's Choice Instant. So I made mm. that with like soy milk because there was a, like some splashes of soy milk left. And I did that and tried to clean a pool for six hours, which I wasn't successful on. Like, that is a right. weird combo. All right. New channels. So, so you on? Is this the regular cars channel? Or is no, it it's not. This is regular and uh, Roman. Uh, we do it on a second Roman. channel now. So uh, I should. Can is there understand. a way I can yeah, share there this? Um, there we go. There's me. So just copy. Okay, I'm going to po post delay. it on Twitter. Yeah, a little bit. We are live. Ah, I hate, God, I hate Max. What? God, I hate. Why did it make the, all I wanted to do is just post the link, enough. you douche. There you go. Okay, I got this. When, the, when this, Matt, when this. When this laptop kicks a bucket, I'm just getting yeah, a Windows device. Yeah, buying a Mac again. is like buying a Toyota. You can say that, but you have like 15 more years before that dies. I know, all right. All right. Shall we? What's up first? And we're going to start. Who's with our, a... uh, Tom's going to be the beer MC. Mm -hmm. Like full disclosure, there's going to be a lot of dogfish and Sam Adams beers here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, provided by our friend Ben. So. This one is a, uh, we're going to, usually I like to start with something that's a little more refreshing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I usually like to go light to heavy, light to dark kind mm -hmm. of right. That's a good way. So this is called Sequench. It's by Dogfish Head. You got a second camera there or no? Unfortunately, you no. Th this. That's the one thing about this Mac is that it only has two USB ports. Which is dumb. Um, isn't that like a pro? How's that? Yeah, but this is like a 2015 laptop. Yep. yep, they can see it. Sequence. It's by Dogfish Head. It says it's a session sour fruit lime juice lime peel black limes and sea sour. salt. Uh, it's almost like a I'm gonna call it a margarita, but it's very limey, mm -hmm. right? Would you agree with that? But it's an easy like drink it all day kind of sour. All right, so let's you guys pour you guys pour yourself first and then just I'll take, I'll take the little like finger of beer. We that's have left. Yeah, Stockfish Head there. now owned by Boston Beer. Yeah, you're not gonna, thirty. You guys can drink thirty. You're gonna beers. notice that there's uh, some Sam Adams beers on here too. So <laughs> don't clutch your pearls too much. Yes, Dogfish Head. It was a merger between Boston Beer and Dogfish Head in 2019. The two companies joined forces. So. Cheers. Point. Dude, that's more than a little, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to what I don't know what. This is probably the this is the seventh or eighth regular beer that I've done. Yeah. Cheers to coming back. Thanks, Tom. Are they all with you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I did one by myself, but it was just margarita or yeah, martini night. Regular martini night. It was just me was. making dirty martinis the entire night. <laughs> by yourself though on the podcast? Yeah, it was pretty much like a Brian and you, which people yeah. people like it. Like sometimes I'll just go on and like I will just talk to the stream for like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. People really like those. I don't feel like that'd be rough for them when you had to go make another drink. Thoughts, Pat? So I am not a sour fan, but I am a fan of this beer because it has, I don't know, like it's... Obviously, it's not actually hydrating, but it has like that hydrating effect more so than some sours. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't like there are sours that I drink where my mouth just feels like dry after. It almost reminds me of, uh, in a good way, if we can talk about hydrating, it reminds me of like the lemon lime Gatorade, mm -hmm. like or Gator Gum. Oh, I remember Gator remember Gum. Remember Gator Gum? Yeah. This beer tastes like Gator Gum. Okay. <laughs> it was a weird thing, but like, Yes, not actually. And how are our levels? Am it's I louder? I know alcohol. I'm closer to them. I can up their levels or lower my levels. It's pretty low alcohol. This this guy is what about four percent? Oh, four point nine. I'm upping their not levels by another notch. <laughs> That's a butt heavy right there. <laughs> my, okay. My standard is off now because I just like to me, I literally like truly is five percent. And I'm like, but it's only like five percent. I just because like 
everything, right? It's I get only five. I get free yeah, beer when you work for so craft everything beer. I drink is like. If you're talking about craft beer, five percent is pretty low. Yeah. generally, yeah. Yeah, it's like you're talking six to seven, eight. That's a heavier one. Yeah. So this one, it's it's uh, it tastes thirst quenching because it has a good amount of acidity. It's not like sour, mm -mm. really, but it's sour. And it's, it's I would say, again, if you ever had Gator gum, if you're uh, if you're younger than thirty five, then you don't know what Gator gum is, but uh, it was Gatorade gum. That was basically just gum and and, and acid, guess, yeah, and, and lactic acid, <laughs> and like flavoring. So yeah, it was like lime flavored, lemon lime. That was lemon lime flavored. This is straight up lime, mm. but it is quite. Uh, I'm lemon not sure lime. what the black lime brings to the party. Uh, is there any chance? Uh, Str45 says, are there any chances of RCR stories returning? Yes. Um, Normally, I write them when I travel and when I have downtime, but lately this summer has been pretty unique with uh, the amount of work uh, I've been doing for the channel and also trying to get the merch store running and also uh, working on the Sarah. So uh, when things slow down again, probably in the fall, um, then I'll start writing journals again. I miss like just dedicated writing that doesn't have video editing attached to it. Good question. Sorry, that was kind Sweet of like a clinch. No, you got to answer the super chat. That's yeah. when it's there. You want more? No more. <laughs> no. If you want to discard a, pile, you can put a discard pile. Sharing this on the tweets. Mm. No, no discard piles. That's cheating. Discard pile. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to write tomorrow. Like Nick and I have a writing meeting tomorrow. And I don't want to be all, ugh, Why? getting up in the morning so the old roman yep how's he doing doing great good yeah he's running most of the merch store and he's running the facebook page and he's also doing research for these uh um, mini documentaries that do very 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 well oh yeah no, so I've like his his like the life and death of pontiac yeah. has been like the top five like it was like a year ago, and it's still in the top yeah. five of the most highest earning videos that we've ever done. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, he goes in depth, and I feel like he's – it's an interesting take, right? Because this is not like he, – he doesn't – you know, some documentaries, it feels like it's sort of like God's point of view of this. And instead, yeah. this sort of feels like a friend describing it to you. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, even if they know that story, are interested in hearing yeah. it. I'm going to put this here. Do you want like a bucket or something? You can use the. No, I'm just. I want. I want to, I'm trying to follow the chat too, and so I needed something with liquid in it. So we move on to the next beer. Yes. Uh, this one is called Vibrant Potion. And it's by Dogfish Head. It's a collaboration with Rodenbach. Some of you might know Rodenbach. What is Rodenbach? Rodenbach is basically the gold standard for a Flemish. Lower of it. There you go. For Flanders Red, Rody Grand Cru is basically the. If you want to know what Flanders uh, Red tastes like, you should have Rody Grand Cru. And you'll call Rody. Okay. Cool people call it Rody. Mm -hmm. If you want to sound cool. Now, Rodenbach is the, uh, the one. Um, but uh, this is a sour ish. Oh, it's two year fooder sour, so it's aged in a fooder. Right, uh, which is a big ass barrel, very big, like the size of your house. Oh, not okay. this house. This is like three stories, but a normal house. Uh, and uh, you got fooders down there. I think I think this was not at not sure. in Milton. I think it was at their site. Yeah, I mean they're in Belgium, mm -hmm. right? So they'll have the fooders. Uh, but uh, a fooder will give, you know, over time, it, it has all these microorganisms that grow in it. So you kind of get this house flavor to it. And uh, so, but this one also has a twist. It's got passion fruit in it, right? No, elderberry. Mm -hmm. uh, was there, there was a potion that had passion fruit. Didn't it? Yes. Elderberry, elderflower, and fleur de sel. And that, there's something about dogfish that always has these like crazy ingredients and it's like, Two, but usually like three of a kind. Of like, and we put this in it, right? So elderberry, elderflower, the sun, really. Fleur de sel—that's salt, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Basically, it's 
Well, like the the other, I didn't bring the other um, canned cocktail. It has um, honeyberry in it or something. Jack of all Corgi says chocolate and lobster. They did make a chocolate lobster beer mm -hmm. one year. I saw yeah. it at GABF. I didn't get it because it was very, it was a very long line to get it. But uh, yes, that's a perfect example of the one ingredient <laughs> too many. <laughs> the dogfish variety. I think as James May would say, what was that one thing where he did wine? When James May and some guy, some other guy who did like that wine tour. Yeah. It was like 10 years ago. Oz like Clark. He, yeah. Yes. Oz and James Wine Adventure. Yes. Great television. Oh. Love those guys. And uh, Oz Clark, they were doing like a garlic wine and he called it an unholy alliance of flavors. So we're thinking of chocolate and lobster. <laughs> yeah. That. I think that's the kind of thing where they go. <laughs> yeah. Lobster. Yeah. All right. Um, but uh, this is uh, a kettle sour, which is different from some of the fooder beers that Rody would make. Right? Mm -hmm. Kettle sour, you put your bacteria in before you ferment it, and you get the, the malt all acidulated, and then you boil it up. It's, so it's easier to – it keeps it from cross-contaminating. Right with all those bacteria, but also it's a little faster process, right? Mm -hmm. You need you need. Uh, it says two year fooder, so you, it's been in there. So yeah. there's some of those native microorganisms did their job, but normally you'd need like six months to a year to get the sourness at all mm -hmm. in, a, in a in a normal barrel sour. But anyway, we got a super chat here from uh, it's Matto. That's a familiar uh, Gorda Rumsey. He is from Australia, <laughs> I believe, and he says beer. Also, Delica Fund, if you're still committed to that goal. Yeah, probably Delica 2022. They gave us $31 dose. <laughs> 31 <laughs> I was wondering what A dollar sign was. I guess that's Australian. That's, it's A or maybe it's AD. But well, it says A dollar a. sign on my thing. Okay. Yeah, that's like our uh, – it, it's sometimes it's like biggest market is – outside of the US is usually flip flops between Canada, UK and Australia. And I'm sometimes Australia is number one for like people who like RCR. So awesome. Huh. Um, I also love the Simpsons too. So the more Simpsons references you put in, the more Aussies you'll get. Is that true? That is absolutely Australians freaking love the Simpsons. Yeah. Aussie guy. Where are you? It's, it's Matto. Matto. You like Simpsons, mate. <laughs> that was British. Uh, Gordy Rumsey, nice, uh, Canada, says, uh, Mr. Regular, can I get a brown for my friend in Pennsylvania who daily drove a Ford Edsel and he called it the filthy mobile? An Edsel? Yeah, like Ed Edsels aren't bad. They're just ugly for their time. But yeah. now they're just like any old like winga dinga classic car. Yeah. Apart from, I think some of them had some weird -a -dinga. like, like, push button transmission yeah. but i think they were still just running like a variation of the c3 transmission or something yeah like that. or an early version of maybe the fordomatic two speed yeah yeah but it's well who did the push button first because mopar did push button two they the loved that yeah yeah and now they're now they're bringing it back with their dial thing that's that weird evolution but you were telling me when you you work for enterprise right yeah yeah and they would just break yeah yeah the dials would just mm. go and now, well, Ford's doing it with the Mach-E as well, but that's a whole different story. You don't really... Well, GM's doing it. The new Yukon, it's a push button. Ugh. It's not, you know, it used to be a, still a column shifter. Now it's a weird, I have to pull my drive and put it. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know who told them that we like that. I don't know either. It's like, I don't know if there's a beer equivalent of it. It's like, I don't know, making something a nitro that doesn't need to be a nitro. Mm -hmm. or or redesigning remember Heineken had that keg can for no reason <laughs> yeah yeah for aesthetic reasons yeah Did people you change the product it. is it something different should I try it no it's the same beer but mm -hmm. look at this shape yeah it's the same transmission we've always had mm -hmm. it's just now it's a button well now we're conceding the fact that it's already been electronic and not actually a linkage for the last 15 years True. 10 yeah. years whatever yeah, yeah. By the way, the car knowledge here goes from right to left, from Mr. Regular to zero <laughs> over here, and the beer, beer knowledge, knowledge just goes the other way. Mm -hmm. So you're like in the middle. Mm -hmm. You seem to know something a about little bit cars. About both. Yeah. I don't know anything about cars. I drive a 2007 Honda Civic, and the tailpipe recently fell off. 
And I say recently, I mean last year. Mm -hmm. But but I live in seven. Iowa. Mm -hmm. It'll just keep running. It's just a little louder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll yeah. just keep running. Though. Yeah. And... Well, no, it, no, nothing happened. No. I just picked it up and put it in the trunk yeah. and moved on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> and the family's daily is a Toyota Highlander. Highlander. Yeah, we got Highlander 17 Highlander. Yeah. yeah, hybrid. With a Wolverine gash on one side, I saw. Yeah, that was. I didn't do that. I don't want to blame anyone no else, no but fault. there is only one other driver in my family. Wasn't your kids then? It was not my kids. Saying. My right. wife. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, it's not going to die. It's like, eh, the doors. Is, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Elderberry. Elderberry up. is like a. It's like a current almost. It has like a ketchupy thing to me on mm -hmm. the finish. Mm -hmm. Elderflower is something you pay too much for when you buy Saint Germain liquor. <laughs> and fleur de sal is just uh, is what happens when you start you dry out seawater and you get these like starts to crystallize right so but uh yeah kind of kind of currency almost like if you're british or maybe australian if you've had this vina or is this what we've been you doing? might you yeah. might okay. it's kind of like that although elder, it's not exactly current but it's that's what i would compare it to finish that up on bartend right on oh, you gotta do stuff tomorrow mr hmm? regular are you a furry we must know yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> 2013 called him with a breaking news back. <laughs> what are we doing next, Tom? Oh, I forgot to get beer. Um, the lager comparison? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I bought a white rag if you need it. No, I'm good. I put my shirt in the freezer before. I feel pretty nice. good. Ask Surprisingly, dragon. not a whole bunch of beer questions for Tom. I'm sure they'll come in. When Nick Kennedy says, good analogy, nobody needs a Guinness Nitro IPA. <laughs> and uh, it's totally... All right. It's with, totally naked better than Spotted Cow. I have no idea. I haven't had totally naked. Spotted Cow is fine. I think I've addressed this on the podcast before. Hmm. I wouldn't go to Wisconsin to get it, even though I live next door to Wisconsin. <laughs> Well, <laughs> next door, southwest. Wisconsin is my neighbor. I wouldn't drive to Wisconsin. How do we feel about Raging Eagle? Great question, Aiden. Yeah. That might come up later. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, geez. We should have done that one right after the fruit bear. But oh, Nikki far. Bob says, have you ever been concerned about wrecking a viewer's car? Yes. Yes. That's why I don't uh, go ham with them. And I take the philosophy that Matt Farah takes, like, look, if I wreck your car, I'm buying it, which is a very like when, when like when a guy comes with that, like McLaren 675 LT, that's a four hundred thousand dollar car. When it was new. I am not now, granted, he was super cool because he was like this tech bro who literally this was like fun money to him. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think he bought it. for I don't know. Maybe he bought it for like two hundred thousand, which is which is hell of a bargain, depreciation. bargain price. Yeah. So, yes, I am nervous Should sometimes when it's a very expensive car. If we're doing just some bullshit, like $3,000, if I wreck it, I'm like, okay, that's going to hurt. That's going to, I'll feel that for a month and then I won't care. But um, yeah, uh, it really does depend on what we're driving. But I don't drive them really fast. I don't go on a track. And I only kind of stab at the throttle if it's something fast. And I know the roads around here very well and driving them my whole life. So, um, so good question, though. Uh, there was a STR Red Wolf with a very generous donation. I'm flattered, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Mr. Regular, follow up from my previous contribution a few podcasts ago. I ended up buying a 2012 Toyota RAV4 Limited for $19,000, and uh, which I bought with a $5,000 deposit with of crypto <laughs> to replace my 2013 Volkswagen Passat like petrol uh, that I crashed. Any good loggers? So, okay. Perfect so timing. He, he wants a lot of <laughs> recommendation. And I also say, yes, a 2012 Toyota RAV4 is much better than a 2013 Volkswagen Passat. Yes. I think maybe the upper trim Passats have a better interior game than Toyotas, but it's not that much. Uh, the RAV4, you're going to drive that for at least another 10 years. That's going to be great. You're 
Yeah. That's what I've said to somebody about Toyotas, my undying love for them. Well, go ahead, Tom. So my like my my undying love for Toyotas is like I'm not saying they're perfect and they have their flaws and they're certainly boring in some trims. Yeah. But show me Toyotas does. Yeah. Show me Toyotas like, oh, we introduced it and 15,000 miles later, the lifters failed. Oh, we yeah. introduced it and it had a massive recall because all the transmissions failed after. Yeah. Th- like it doesn't yeah. happen. People go, oh, the frames rusted out. It's like. Yeah, yeah, on a car that's 20 years yeah. old. It had 240,000 miles Bills. on it. It was allowed to rust. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, duds that they did. That's a good question. Show what, me one. Show me the duds. And I'm not talking duds like it didn't sell well, because Toyota's very good at figuring that out and killing it very quickly if yeah. it happens. I'm or talking GM about of them. Yeah, I'm talking about, like, show me the one where it was like, we made this. And we had a catastrophic failure. We made this. And we, the only thing I can think of is the airbags that was really not isolated to Toyota and yeah. the unintended acceleration, acceleration, which was really. Wrong. And it was a little bit of hubris on Toyota's part. You, you, I, I will give them flack for that because they knew about that and didn't react as quickly as they should. Yeah. You know, it, and a part of it was people getting confused and hitting the wrong, but there was some truth to the whole, their, their uh, floor mats were moving and all that. Yeah. And they didn't react as quick as they could have. And I think they learned from it. Yeah. But like, as far as their mechanical failures in production, show me a car where they just like, they made it and they're like, ah, yeah, we really screwed that up. Like, I don't think of one where a Toyota mechanic at a dealer is like, Oh man, I can't stand it. Whenever I see this model, your Corolla come in, like yeah. it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, like, they're yeah. just like, Oh Yeah. It was easy to work on, and the engine kept running even though they didn't put enough oil in it. Yeah, like it just. I want to say dud from a mechanical standpoint. There are mechanics that won't touch MR2s, really? but that's just because it's a fantastic design, but highly complicated, mm-hmm. and it also has like a first down worth of radiator lines yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah, in this so, tiny little car. Although uh, Justin Burnett says you can take a stock first gen. Uh, both um, Mark 1A and Mark 1B, AW11s, you can take them to a track day, bone stock, run them as hard as you want. They will never overheat hmm. because there's so much cooling in there. It's cooling down on the way to the radiator. Yeah. And there's just so much more volume than your average car. Yeah. It's a car with the engine in the middle and you got to run lines all the way to the front where the fans are. Yeah. You just have that more, I guess, volume to absorb the yeah. energy or thermal energy. Of well, and it's running thing. over. Air is running over it when you're moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the the line. It's the line like itself a is getting yeah. air blown out. It's kind of plunged in the air. I heard that explanation. <laughs> so loggers. Somebody said, "What are some good loggers?" Well, here's two. This is a standard. You probably had this one. Is that right? Down. Down. Right. Down. You're good. But have you had this one? So this is on your left. On Brian's left. This is OG Boston Lager, what Jim Cook came up with, his first recipe that was based on his family recipe, came out in 1984. This was kind of the precursor and really kind of started the craft beer movement in this country. Everybody else was just making crap beer, and this is what Jim came up with. Now, this is Boston Lager 2.0. It's still an experiment, but it is a new version of Boston Lager. Remastered, lighter, I think, what is it, brighter and crisper is the current branding on it. It says brighter and easier drinking. Brighter and easier drinking. Improvements to our brewing process and ingredients. So this is still an experiment, not available in all states yet, but it's something that is uh, being worked out. You know, I don't know which one. one, I don't know which one is which. The left. This is the original. Oh, Oh. I was. You wanted to guess triangle test, but to try to find out. But now I know. You want me to sort them for you? I can turn them back. A triangle test is the best way to see if there is a difference, but. Because you're going, mm. like you know that they're different. So you're looking yeah. for, you're mentally looking for differences. Yeah. So, but eh. <laughs> I can I can sort them for you if you want. So this is the original. Mm-hmm. All right. So now, yeah. Are we starting with the original? Yeah. Okay. All right. OJ. Staple of airport bars all over the East Coast. Yep. Probably hey. West Coast. Any port in a storm. Yeah. That's my uh, thing about Boston Lager is if it's it's at every airport, like you said, yeah. and if there's nothing else, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Reliable. I also see like the standard dogfish head in most airports. 60 well. minutes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. It's in Philly. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's kind of, I mean, they're, that's overlapping in market, right? Like Sam brand is biggest in new England. Dogfish is biggest in mid Atlantic, right? Where their mm -hmm. home bases are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the remaster. I agree with Alan Turner. Says my favorite yingling has to be Lord Chesterfield. I will say yes as well. Hey. With the caveat. Hey. Chetty shirt right here. Nice. I wore the shirt of the band to the concert. Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> and is Goose Island. Yeah, Goose Island is, is in a lot of airports too. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll see, especially what Chicago. Is that, Coors? No, it's. Uh, I don't remember anymore. AB. That's oh, Goose Island. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that in Austin Airport. It was interesting because every place was all like Austin beer because they're super big down there. But that was what they were serving at every tap that I saw in Austin Airport as well as the hotel when I was there in town. Was hmm. Well, that's like one of the early examples, though, of a giant brewer being like, these craft brewers seem to have a following. Let's make our own craft beer. Uh, you know, I mean, like I, I would say, like a premium. Mm -hmm. So, my initial impression in the uh, horizontal test here is that it is like lighter in body for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but what's the? You want to talk about what's the difference in the process? I mean, I couldn't speak to all of the details on it, but um, yeah, I mean, effectively the idea behind the change is yeah, a little bit, a little, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, to, I will describe my impressions of it is that it like the mouth feels a little bit different and the aftertaste is a little bit different. Yeah. I won't do justice to the whole back end of it. No, I totally agree with that. Um, it's, it kind of has the, almost the exact same kind of nose. An attack, but yeah, it, it's it, it's lighter. I think it goes down a little easier, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, which is not a bad thing, I don't think, for lager, for mm -hmm. sure, right? I mean, it's all it has it's always taste. been all, all all barley, right? Mm -hmm. So or all malt. German no beer laws. So yes, yes, I remember that from the Sam Adams store. We did that tour a couple of times, then we right up in Boston. Oh yeah, yeah. So. And they let you. I I miss. I, I wish I still had that little glass they gave out, the little tasting glass at the yeah. end. Um. Oh, we got a guy saying, uh, "You you ban pie one." Uh, being from Michigan, people love two-headed ale from Bell's. Too hearted. Yeah. Too hearted. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. That's a good <laughs> beer. Too headed. That's a good beer. Too hearted. Yeah, it's got a fish on it. That's a great one. Uh, I have some Michigan beer. I don't have any Bell's, but I have some beer from Michigan, in the back. But yeah, it's it is uh, this. It, so is this going to replace? So that's what this trial is for, right? Okay. There's no decision yet, but the question is, is this a, a better direction to go? So, do you have an idea of why they're doing this? I think processing wise, there are some benefits to this new, as well as you know, everybody like there is a cult following for Boston Lager, right? Right, but you're you're trying to keep that same cult following and and give them what they're looking for, but there's another group that will like have a Boston Lager once in a while and be like, oh, it's a little oh, it's heavy, it's a little heavy, right? So this oh, is my tum tum feel big big. Yeah, yeah, really. Well, the mouth feel and then the yeah, and then it you feel heavier. But again, I I also know noticed that with regular old Yingling Lager, it's mm -hmm. a heavier beer, and I'm like, ugh, <laughs> it's like. When was the last time I had a Yingling? I didn't have one at any of the parties. And, oh, Real damn it. Is that what you think of Yingling? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah. It's maybe in the same way that your dad doesn't really drink it anymore. It's like, I've you're had so, my You're just over it? I'm over it, yeah. It's fine. I drink a shit ton of it when I come home, but I'm only home about twice a year. Yeah, so. true. Would I, would I drink it all the time? No, my house beer is right now is Miller Lite or Miller High Life Light. Didn't know that exists. My house beer, mm -hmm. generally. Anyway, sing along with There's Gordon some, the old uh, Ed Fitzgerald. Yeah. Um. Uh, take care of some super chats here while you're deciding the lineup. Uh, oh, I got the lineup. Oh hell yeah, Christopher Conrad. Thank you for your donation. Dealing with fluctuating power here in Florida, what's a good room temperature beer? Meaning a beer that's to be drank 
He put, he said 70 degrees. Oh, shit. Um, oh, beer for when... Well, oh, a good beer that's still that's good when the fridge dies. Hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not quite as big a I'm deal. I'm guessing... Let me see if I can figure out what you'd say. Like, the higher APV, the better? Yes. Okay. Absolutely on that. But I was going to say, too, if you're saying you have it in a fridge and now your fridge died on you... That's what he said. A good beer for when the fridge dies. I mean... Anything that is pasteurized, so any modern beer, like most of the beers, these beers were pasteurized. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it it's not that it's great if you kept doing it that way, but it's not really that big a deal. Like the whole like old school, like, oh, I skunked my beer, not that big a deal if you pasteurized. Mm -hmm. So I mean if I wouldn't worry like if you had good beer in there and then it ended up at 70 degrees, I wouldn't like throw it away. It's still going to be fine. Put it back in the fridge whenever it cools back down. But as far as like, if you want to drink something at room temp, yeah, better beer or you're going to have better taste, right? That's part of the whole appeal of the, the, what is the, the mountains on the can get ice cold? Like <laughs> num numbs your taste buds. It's the coldest so you can drink tasting it. beer <laughs> yeah, like, that you will find. Uh, no offense to who is that? Coolest tasting. That's no Kurt's life. Course. Yeah. What's your uh, take on it? Well, I have an answer to what's a good uh, beer that's uh, good warm. It's not a beer, but I really enjoy a warm mango white claw. <laughs> All right. It's uh, it tastes it's different, but it just tastes like you're eating a mango in like mm. a, a off the tree, and it's warm and tropical. And huh. it's, uh, <laughs> and I discovered this because it was in the back of my friend Connor's car. <laughs> And uh, you were we, desperate for a drink. We drank a, a warm mango white were, claw. Were you getting like the shakes? What, what was this scenario where you're like, I got to open that? No, it was, well, I got a, I got a, you know, you want a road claw? <laughs> like, okay, I'll do a road claw. And I drank this uh, mango <laughs> white claw. That's why you need a Land Cruiser with a cooler in the middle of the console. Hell yeah. It's, anyway, I, I advise you, if you, some of you are skeptical, I advise you to try a warm. Mango White Claw. And I, tell me if I'm wrong. I cannot obviously advocate for White Claw, but uh, I I mean, if you want to drink warm seltzer, go for it. Yes, Jack of All Corey says light ruins beer more than temperature ever will. Exactly. That's why I don't like beer in green bottles. Uh, and uh, yeah, light is what skunks beer, not necessarily the temperature changes, but temperature changes will oxidize faster. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, if you kept doing it, it would definitely degrade the taste of the beer. Well, it wow, you cycled yeah. it. I don't know if your fridge was turning off. And <laughs> yeah. If you kept your fridge only on during the night, you would have a real problem. Yeah. There's a good super chat here but from uh, Nick Kennedy. We didn't get I uh, just want to go in the direct order, but uh, just for my own like organizational skills. But is it relevant, though? Should we touch it to what you're talking about? Well, I think you got them all. Until oh, I'm still back with Cameron. I have yet to do Cameron. Um, Cameron's a car question. Casey White says no, scariest, scariest car, car I ever question. reviewed today. Scariest car I ever reviewed today um, that frightened the hell out of me. Um, gonna it's going to be. It's, no, it can't be the McLaren because that's still no. no. That still acts normal. This yeah. thing that I shouldn't. Uh, you gave this one before, and it was the what was the crazy. Um, like Frankenstein put together car. I don't remember. Oh, oh. Was it the the Impreza with the yeah, DJ? Yeah, I was gonna say it was a Subaru. Turbo. Yeah, yeah. It took forever, and once it came on, no the, gauges or whatever. Yeah, the guy was next to me in a laptop, yeah. just telling me what the ECU is doing. The gauges <laughs> are falling out. I'll pour it myself. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna Fine. put a shot in there? <laughs> Real fart. Those are all him, by the way, so far. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got I got it done before we started. <laughs> I'm a I'm a pillar of health. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely the two J the the two J swap uh, Impreza. The um, next one. Is, not that you can't change your answer, but I remember you giving that answer. I think it was the last time you and I did a podcast. You gave that answer. Yeah. Um, Case White says, "Hey, Mr. Regular, and generous donation. Thank you." Hey, Mr. Regular, thank you for the advice on the 80 Celica, though I'm starting to come to my senses and I'm now looking at some sort of Ford Focus or F Fiesta. I hey, a Fiesta ST is fantastic. Any Celicas I've found are butchered unless the dealer, unless it's a dealer fine at 5K. Yeah. I've seen some decent final gen Celicas for like 10, but I think they were all auto boxes. So mm. 
Yeah, I, I think I think the buy and hold definitely is the final years of the Celica. GTS. Yes, if you can find it. 180 horsepower from this yeah. little tiny engine. Yeah, the problem with that engine and uh, that Bernash said is that the gearing doesn't match the engine. Yeah. The power band is so tiny. By the time by the time you shift it, you're out of it again. Well, it was a six-speed transmission, which was kind of early for a six-speed for yeah. that for a Toyota anyway. I think the power band may have, may have only been like 490 RPM, where yeah. it was actually sitting and high on the cam. Yeah. But yeah, uh, final gen, final gen Celica is the one you should look for. It's a definite buy and hold, and given uh, the market, you could probably flip it. They did look a little boy racer. I will say that. Yeah. The GTS with the with the the Fast what was and it? Furious. The looking. action pack. The action pack. Do you remember it had like an almost knockoff STI looking before it was an STI looking wing yeah, on the back? It was, and it had all these body cladding and like side skirts. It was a little bit like, yeah. okay, all right, chasing trends. Yeah, yeah, let's let's chill out. Speaking of chasing trends, that's a good uh, segue. Mm -hmm. Our next beer is called Wicked Hazy. Good. 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 Wicked Hazy by Sam Adams. So I get to keep my Sam Adams hat on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a juicy New England IPA. New England means hazy IPA. It means generally not a lot of uh, hops in the boil, so not a lot of bitterness. You're just looking for the aroma characteristics of the hop, and generally they're unfiltered, so they're hazy. Citrusy. This, this is. is a plastic cup, so you can't see. But uh, um, this is... Um, hey, Nuggets in the chat. The, the uh, hazy. From, One of my uh, favorites that we make, actually. Do you know what the hops are in this guy? No. <laughs> I should. Shout out to uh, track instructor. Uh, if anyone David drinks McKinley. a hazy, I'm leaving. Oh, there's only two. We only have two. <laughs> Not a car. Uh, shout out to uh, David McNewitt, who's in the chat and who's taught me a lot about racing. He says the on it food truck on two wheels was scared, scared the crap out of me, and I was in the camera car. Yeah, that's when uh, Monica Harrison took a turn and bounced it, and that food truck was on two wheels for just a second. Um, <laughs> because the, the food truck nice. was off balance because all the stoves and stuff were on one side. Ah. So when you took yeah, right yeah, turns, yeah. it was fine because all your ballast is on the left. When you take left turns, whoop, whoop. Yeah. When you were doing that, I kept thinking of the old Top Gear where they would do the RV. Oh, the different me, right things. turns it would be because, yeah, it's going to the left. But yeah. You remember the old Top Gear with the RV where they would have a camera inside the RV and they yeah. would show just everything getting demolished <laughs> yeah. in there? Slash That's sort of what I kept thinking around. of with that food truck. We kind of intentionally put a lot of like paper utensils and stuff to make a mess on the inside. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a great like, yeah. It was very entertaining. I instantly swished because it compelled me to. What do you, yeah. You, what, you were compelled to swish. What do you mean? Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like mouthwash. Yeah. It's, it's, even though there's no head, it feels foamy Jones. It, it's thick with, it has sediment, right? It, it's, it's not filtered. Mm. I don't know if this one's unfiltered. It, it looks, it's pretty hazy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hazy. hazy. Uh, but, well, it's called Wicked Hazy. So this Fox is for, sake. if you've drank Sam Adams New England IPA before, this is the name change of, of Sam Adams New England IPA. Ah, Rebranding. But it it's is. one of my favorites that we make. I just, it's a, to me, it's a really good in the IPA citrusy. Yeah. Wise. You know what? New England IPA is the kind of the hot, I don't want to say it's a hot trend right now because it's, it's more than a trend. Mm. It's a, it's a staple. Mm. I was just in New England last week and uh, the bar that I went to there, it, it was like a British pub, but it was like, uh, mm, you know, so they had like Fuller's Guinness mm -hmm. And the rest were New England's case, okay, right? So, uh, yeah. absolutely no bitterness on here. Mm -mm. Uh, Smooth. It's your cousin from Boston. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do love the Bill Burr bit. Yeah, uh, SNL. The SNL. <laughs> this is the kind of beer that you like have in the back of your fridge, and somebody would come over and be like, uh, "You got any beers?" Like, "Well, I got this pumpkin shit." <laughs> 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 this one's fine though. It's uh Did you see his SNL with the Mike your cousin from Boston? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, there was that, but there was, a, there was the Samuel Adams uh pumpkin beer mm -hmm. one that was, yeah. That was good. Um so this is uh, 
Hey, the IPAs are not IPAs, says mm -hmm. Bitch Inspector. Ah, oh, not an IPA. <laughs> but uh, there's no bitterness at all. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you if you want bitterness, this is not the beer for you because it's not supposed to be. It's it's all the aroma hops. And, and you'll usually get your, your A-list premium uh, specialty hops in these, your citras and your... Uh, galaxies mm -hmm. and whatnot i don't know what, what exactly is in here but yeah, i'm sure it's, it's quite it's quite tropical tell you the it's, it's it's fine it does it does the job you know high it does what it's supposed to do that's like a car does what it's supposed to do it's the right it's it does good. what it <laughs> says <laughs> on the tin <laughs> you're saying this is a toyota cam right uh, it will always do exactly what you ask it to do. I yeah. it it it's a juicy New England IPA. It's, See to it's me, a yeah, citrusy is, and I uh, would right, let's call it then. The let's V6. call it. six. It's got a little bit more than your average, but it's not. It's a Lexus ES. It's okay, comfortable. Yeah. It's it's refined, yeah. but it's not it's not terribly exciting. Idiots not, will think you have money and mm -hmm. taste. Yeah, and, yeah, and only yeah. you will know that it's a front wheel drive Camry with yeah. a different badge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, okay. Black. I think this is a beer question. It says Syrah better than Cascade. Syrah? Citra. Citra. Citra better than Cascade. Yes. That was a little while ago when I was talking about pseudo Sue. Those are hops. Nerdy Hillbilly says, I'm basically Miller High Life. <laughs> so I guess he's describing himself as Miller High Life. <laughs> okay, this is a beer and car question. So Nick Kennedy asks, what is the official beer of the Buick Century driving? I'm your dad. Time to go to church. <laughs> so uh, someone uh, who, who has morals, high morals, low taste. Well, that's Coors nice. Banquet. I was going to say. Banquet's actually good. Yeah. I like Coors Banquet. Do you? Personally, yes. I live what in kind Colorado of is it a pilsner? I lived in Colorado for four years. Maybe I'm a little biased, but uh, is it a pilsner? No, it's uh, it's you. You could probably call it an amber lager. It's it's okay. like a little bit darker than an American lager. I it's not quite amber, but it's it's like a golden. Okay. I don't know. It's a champagne and beer. Banquet's not bad. Banquet is not bad. No, it's uh. I was gonna say around here, your your description like around here to me, that I feel like that car though it's like it's like Bud Diesel, like that's <laughs> like, like your you know what I mean like that like around here maybe it's Gingling Lager I in Pennsylvania. I rarely see people. I rarely see people in bars around here drink Budweiser. No, no, they just drink Gingling. Right. Like you just go there and if you order a lager, you get a Gingling. Like that is. I think the Brick House serves. Coors Light or Miller Light? Do they? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's light. It's just the giggling light. Yeah. Though. That's been yeah. flying off the shelf, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, the puns. we have one, uh, just uh, Boris T.S. Karloff, remembering Tom's catchphrase. He says, uh, my favorite beer is the one I haven't tried yet is a great conversation starter when someone asks. Great call thanks for the thanks, thanks for the phrase, Tom. Thanks, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that you brought that back. He does have one Very beer cool. question, but do you want to introduce that first? Or yeah, just... so this beer is, uh, we're going to take a break from the Dogfish Head, Samuel Adams, Boston Beer Company owns that thing. And uh, this is from Iowa, where I come from. Iowa? Uh, it's from a brewery called Toppling Goliath, which is one of the OG kind of uh, uh, Whale craft breweries. This one, uh, Pseudo Sue, was a very favorite of them. Uh, it was all very, it was very uh, whaley. But this one's called uh, Ferrari Backpack. I thought that would be good for regular car reviews. Ferrari Backpack. It's a double IPA. It's got Ruwaka, Strata, Citra, Sabro, and Amarillo hops. So, Toppling Goliath. All of their beers look like orange juice because they're very rarely filtered. Okay. And, but generally what you get is something that's, oh my God, if you, you should just reuse the cups because they're, each of these cup, new, new cups is like yeah. foamy Jones over yeah, there. Yeah, you got a point. But uh, TG, 
their kind of standard is that it's really hazy. It's almost like orange juice. In fact, don't pour down to the bottom because you'll get a bunch of sediments. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, they established their reputation with pseudo Sioux, which is all Citra. And now they're kind of branching out to various things. They have pretty much national distro at this point, or at least at the coast to coast. I don't know hmm. everywhere, but uh, I saw it in Massachusetts when I was there. It's um, a great name. Top you of the Well, that like was the good. idea. They're taking yeah. on the big brewers. Yeah. Um, but uh, okay, this is. Remember in Reservoir Dogs when? Uh, uh, don't worry, I'm going somewhere. This okay, way. yeah, sure you are. In Reservoir Dogs, when Tarantino's character uh, explained like a virgin that speech. Yeah. It's, it's like a woman who's like fucks all the time and then but now she's getting fucked by a huge guy and it hurts <laughs> like it did the first time. So it's like a virgin. This is so complex. It reminds me of the first time I started liking IPAs at Chapter House. Because that that bar was Chapter the first House. time I drank an IPA and I'm like, I like this now. Because the first time I tried it was like Ugh, because yeah. I was just drinking party, you know. It's like part, yeah. Toronto days in college when like Bud Light was the fancy beer to order. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did we? Yeah, it was just like wow. Bush Light. That was so, in college. It was like Bush Gordon, Light. Gordon Rumsey was obviously in the Blue Mountain High School drum line. Uh, Thirty um, pack of Bush Light. So every Boris weekend. has a uh, question for Tom. It says Tom, your thought, and I don't know what this is, but Tom, hmm. thoughts on special export? What is that? Special export, the Molson export. I wonder if that means Molson export or I'm not sure. Mm. There's export, you know, export style stout is like a foreign stout. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what beer you're talking about there, okay. Boris. I'm sorry. Um, if it's the Molson export, that's the Molson of that they drink. Well, we had a bit of that in Canada. Let's yeah, say. yeah. We got Which is just a regular Molson. That's the right? it's like a slightly higher percentage okay. than Molson Canadian. Mm. Right. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about, though, Boris. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you could clarify on that. I'm that's a really good chat. beer. Brian Allen doesn't have a question. Just thank you for your donation. And he says thanks. Do you want thanks. any more? No, I'm good. So we're drinking Topol and Goliath. And like I said, all the beers kind of look like orange juice. This one looks like an orange juice that you get at a hotel. You know, it's kind of watered down. Where it comes out of the spigot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where it comes out of the like, yeah. what is it's happening behind the scenes? And it mixes with water at the spigot. Yeah. Oof. Ah, there's a there's a good bit of tropical stuff in here, especially the Amarillo will do that. That's a really uh, good beer. Some of these, the, the Ruwaka is probably a New Zealand hop. I'm not exactly sure. It sounds like one, don't you think? Hello, mm. New Zealand fans. Hello. <laughs> or uh, what do they say in New Zealand? What are they? They don't say hi. They say, hey. Well, cheers is kind of like hello, goodbye. No, but oh, ye. Ye. They can't be bothered to say yes, so they say ye. Hi. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it, it's more like, you know how you don't hear they but it's not all the time in here where we live, but it's there from time to time and it's fun to hear. So, like, the ye happens. Yeah. Not once in a great while, but well, anyway. But we talked about that last yeah. time, I think. But, but yeah, I'm gonna get another bowl of food. This is um, good. It's a little. It's a little. Whew. It's heavy. It's probably eight uh, percent. It's see. heavy, Doc. It don't say, but it says double IPA, so that's probably at least eight. No, that's a I'm like my, Ferrari backpack is a fantastic name. I should have done my research on this one, apparently, but you know, usually if it's a from TG, uh, pseudo is like six percent. So if it's a double, it's probably at least uh, eight percent. What do you guys think about Hershey's Porter? Have you had the Yingling Hershey chocolate porter? What do you think? Honestly, um, it's one of those things where, like, if somebody, like, the first time I tried it, and somebody's like, have you tried this yet? And gave me one. I was like, right. sure, you're a I'll beer guy. This. Would you like this? I'll drink that. But, like, it, it again, it's it's a lot like, uh, spoiler alert, but what we're going to sample later on tonight of, mm. like, <laughs> if you wanted to just make a beer and add flavoring to it, you could just do that. But I can do that at home, too. I'm sure there's some chocolate syrup that I could find to mix into my yingling lager. Like, I, I just... 
that's what it tastes like to me. It tastes like Hershey's syrup in Yang Wing. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't. My thing about chocolate beer is that generally is chocolate is a multi-sensory experience. You break it off the bar, and you put it in your mouth, and the thing about chocolate is it melts at like 93 or 94 degrees. So it's just at the right temperature to melt in your mm -hmm. mouth. And that experience is combined with the aromatics that you get from mm -hmm. the chocolate. However, when you try to put that in a beer context, yeah. it just doesn't work. I mean, most cases, I haven't had like an awesome chocolate beer unless it's like an imperial, uh, if it's like really, uh, yes, cocoa butter is what I'm yeah. talking about. Unless it's really um, a heavy kind of beer that has a really creamy mouthfeel. So Boston Beer makes a chocolate box that yes. I would say of a chocolate beer. I'm not a chocolate beer fan of any form, but if I was going to drink one, that would be it. Yeah. And we made that chocolate bar. I don't lots think we make it now. Lots of people like uh, mm, Samuel Smith chocolate stout, but I really think mm. that those those kind of chocolate beers taste like, uh, uh, you know, remember chocolate Tootsie Pops? Mm -hmm. A chocolate Tootsie Pop has chocolate aromatics in it, but not the Doesn't texture have the of chocolate. Yeah. So it's like, this wants to be chocolate, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And so that's really, that's what I get from there. The Yingling Hershey Porter as well. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, you got to try this. You're a beer guy. You should mm -hmm. like this beer. It's not my favorite, as maybe I'm my snobby, kids to but say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and For when you don't want chocolate fight milk. They make like adult chocolate milk too. <laughs> chocolate fight milk. Are you, are you an also, Always Sunny fan? Oh, yeah. 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 Try to the, – um, the milk steak. <laughs> your finest jelly beans. I love that show. I rewatched that whole <laughs> show again like a couple months ago. Mm, it's TJ. Okay. We're getting to the end of our IPA cycle here, and then I have a little intermezzo mm -hmm. and a palate cleanser for us. Uh, Before the hard uh, stuff. Look, I, I've been to the England. I've done the England Brewery tour probably twenty times. I didn't. I was there today at the gift shop. I didn't do it today because I've done it a lot. But uh, yeah, I go. Dick England was there. In fact, I saw him across the room. He was. Uh, he's there a, a lot. Tour there, guy. But yeah, he's freaking. He's the, He lives there. I don't yeah. Know. He also drives a. What does he drive? Sure, he drives Ford like product. a Toyota Corolla. Really? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Or no, a Camry. It's because my buddy was, or I think it was my cousin was telling me it's the same model as my mom used to have. Yeah. Dick Yingling is a billionaire and he drives a friggin' mid 2000s See, this is model I was, Toyota Camry. I was talking to your dad about this. Why he and, and Jim Cook are friends is like they both like have, they just give no shits about being billionaires, right? Like right. they're just passionate about the business and what they have and what they built and like, they don't care at all. Like, there's no, you meet Jim Cook, there is no pretense. And Dick Yingling, the same thing. Everything I've heard is like, he just is who he is. And he doesn't, yeah, like, he'll tell you exactly what he thinks. And he's just, yeah, laid back. All right, Gordon. That's admirable. Gordon Rumsey, who is apparently your biggest fan, wants you to read the super chat. Uh, Sorry, I was away putting more food more in me rice. and turning my, air, uh, my window to air conditioner on. Yes, I will read the super chats. Um, uh, Colonel Splendid says, thank you for the donation. Hey, I love what you do. When you go to Oshkosh, you should try to get as close as possible to a B-17 when it's starting up. It's life-changing to see and feel that much power in person. Yeah, what? Each engine is 3,000 horsepower or something like that? <laughs> and there's four of that's them? That's a lot. So. Is that a Jerry Seinfeld reference? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> 20 million. Hey, where's this? Rock, I just wrote down. Can you get 20 million, friends? <laughs> 20 million, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, keep going, and I'll do this here. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. I, there was a B-20. There was a super fortress at, uh, uh, we were there. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Reading Air Show. Yeah. Reading Air Show. Oh, not a car. And you saw it, it like, there it, ooh, there it goes, and there it still is, <laughs> and there it still is, and Tony, and Tony said, yeah, it's an old plane, 
And he's like, it was like, but it's been completely restored. It's like, yeah, that's how slow those bombers really were. Like, wow, well, there it goes. <laughs> but that was like the like most advanced. Or something, right? It's right. Kind of like really heavy. But that's what's but funny when you about see it. like a 747 takeoff, yeah. even though those are old, I mean, they're from like the late 60s. Those things move, but oh, granted, they're not carrying bombs, they don't have armor and stuff on them. But they're no, but that's what's weird about arms races, right? Of any form of military or non military, is like take that technology out of that era and mm -hmm. put it in another era, and it's like this Girls would right. yeah you would yeah. like like if if you had the atom bomb during the right. revolutionary war that would be it it'd be over one guy with you, one plane you would start a new religion yeah <laughs> just like it'd be done so, urban pie one no oh, sorry to interrupt Tom. Okay. no so i'm a 50 year so. mechanical engineering student during robotics and animation watching your videos makes me wish i went into automotive work instead I think in mechanical engineering, you'll be the guy at a desk. You won't be skinning your wrench or skinning your wrenches, skinning your knuckles all the time. But uh, well, you can always learn both, I suppose. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. I just um, like it that every time Tom gets ready, you psych him out and then you read another uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> just just keep doing it. Just, he'll just... I said I had Michigan beer. I was wrong. This is from Ohio. It's from Akron. It's called Hoppin' Frog. It's uh, Hopkin <laughs> Green Frog. How am I doing? I'm doing over here. Oh, sorry. Hopkin Frog is Hopkin Green, not Michigan, Ohio. And it's uh, this is an Imperial Black IPA called Hop Even. Him name Hopkin Green yeah, Frog. Yeah, uh, doesn't say what the hops are. Who found my frog? It's 8.8 percent. .8%, so use with caution. <laughs> This is what I love though about uh, like little craft brewers is they the names are always awesome because there's like no pretense, right? They can just make the name whatever they want the name to be. All right, I'm reusing glasses. Just it's not as foamy. Well, it's pretty still pretty foamy. All right, well, this is a black IPA. It's not really a Cascadian or a black IPA is not usually my favorite style. Just because oh, I like IPAs are very bitter, and usually if you use a lot of black malt, uh, it's also super bitter. And so it can get really overwhelming to me personally. I love me some small and bitters. Then Tommy's <laughs> got the hiccups. Whew. Okay. Oh, this is not Ooh. bad, though. That's good. I'm getting a lot more maltiness out of it. Yes. Than uh, than hops. Uh, yeah, I don't. There's no hop taste to that. Honestly, I got this at the grocery store. There's really no knowing. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. Wait, hang on. This <laughs> says canned on November thirteenth, twenty twenty. So uh, it's, that's not uh, bad. That's borderline. It's, not bad. it's probably not as fresh as it could have been. Uh, so the hop aroma is definitely mm. probably mm. D diminished. But it's uh, that's a nice um nice and nice malt uh, character to it. It's not terrible. It's not a two-year-old beer here. Yeah, there's no hop though. I don't. Yeah. Unless they're saying hoppy, then as they're saying we hate hops. Hoppy. Then you were banished from. This says an uncivilized amount of American hop spiciness. Yeah. I strongly disagree. Yeah. Well, I think I don't think it's very fair to the beer. Yeah. To. For if it's Canada, I just, you know, like I said, I just picked up I the just grocery like it store. I just like the Acme market. I feel like these have been sitting at the grocery store for a long time uh, out Did you there. Get them from Giant? At the, <laughs> no, I got them at the High V in Iowa, <laughs> in Ames. The High V. How many people were going to the A and P to buy that? Deal? Yeah, it, uh, Jack of All Cork says it's it's like a heavy stout. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely got a lot it's of body to it. That alcohol is there. It's almost nine percent, and uh, but and it does have a little. It has a dry finish, mm -hmm. so the the bitterness of the hop is still there. It's just a, there's not a lot of hop, like a dank hop aroma. There is or a, anything like a that. Guinness quality to it. I mm. would I wouldn't. I don't all mean to say compare this to Guinness, but there is a Guinness quality to the mouthfeel. Yeah, because an Irish stout should 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 finish. Yeah. Uh, dry, mm -hmm. right? And so the more bitterness you have, it 
it kind of evens out that yeah. sweet malt. So there's a sweet attack, but it does finish pretty dry. Uh, yes, I bought it in Ames because I live in Ames, but Hop and Frog, you can get some of these in Ames. I have another one too for later, but uh, <laughs> now you need to know you got to get there early to the high V. I guess <laughs> because 473 mil can. Sure. Not quite a half liter. Ooh. How do you feel about that one, Brian? I like it. Yeah. I wouldn't that... drink it all. I think I well, it doesn't really have well, yeah, it's carbonation, but that is one of the heathenistic I will drink half of it and drink the rest tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I feel like it would taste the same. You're pretty acetic overall, though, I would say. Yeah. 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 You don't really take pleasure in the things that most mortals do. <laughs> I, I don't know. I put stuff in like I'm, I'm making gin martinis out of Gilby's and Trumblo and like a whole mess of just olives in there. And I pour a little bit of the olive juice into my martini. Ugh, I hate a dirty martini. I love a dirty martini. Why? Gross. <laughs> All right. You have some uh, super chats okay. to catch up on here. Car Foolery says, last weekend I finished a fir I finished first in class at the Hill Climb Race with my daily driver in 1991 automatic MR2 with 337,000. That's, that's, that's a lot. Even that's I know impressive. that that's a lot. <laughs> Usually I race my turbo MR2, but I want to see how very slow auto would do. That's congratulations. I'll bet what happened was first in your class with, with an auto box, you probably just Maybe he, he just put it in two and just held it. Yeah. And just did nothing. On the hill climb. Yeah. yeah. Just held the, the 3S GTE. Yeah. Well, the 3S GTE. 3SG, 3SGE. Not T. Yeah. Oh, no. the turbo. I was going to say, what's wrong with that sentence? Yeah. He would just held, hold that engine just but at 6,000. I'm more impressed because, like, MR2, like, that's an MR2 with Land Cruiser miles. Yeah. Right? That's like an MR2 with Tundra miles. Like, like somebody put some long haul drives on that MR2 and it's still doing the job. Yeah. Uh, Gordon Rumsey again just says, I drink Molson Canadian. <laughs> Molson Canadian is fine. It's a fine beer. It's fine. If you're in Canada and you go to the beer store, it's just fine. Although that's they just call it Molson there, I guess. Yeah. No, I think that Molson isn't Molson Canadian. Molson Export. Molson Export. Uh, yeah. uh, I think they're slightly different. I'm not sure. Nur Matt Carlton would know. The beer pope. Yeah. Would know. You need yeah. you need the phone a friend? Is that what you can do? Yeah, we need a phone a friend. I can text him. Okay. I'll text Nerdy him. Hillbilly says, I'm thinking about finding oh no, no way. No. Thinking about financing a Maverick, no. Due to it actually being a small, no. That truck is built cheaply to be able that they wanted to sell that truck for twenty two thousand. Yes. Which means how much did it cost to build that truck? Fifteen. So can I mention another YouTuber on this channel? Is right. that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no. So well, no, I, and I don't, and I, I won't despair. Whistling Diesel, right? Isn't right. that his name? Like yeah. the he's like. 17 years old and he just destroys, destroys, things, destroys right? vehicles right? whatever like i i have no opinion on him one way or another like if that's what you want to do and people are watching then great and yeah. if people don't like it then you have plenty of other options to not watch him so mm -hmm. move on but that's the one truck where i'm kind of excited for him to get his hands on it because yeah. i'm so curious to so this guy basically his entire premise is he literally just buys things like he bought a hundred thousand dollar f-250 and just beat it to the last inch of its life like that's all he does that's the truck that I'm like, I'm really curious to see what happens here. It's a unibody truck, like a Honda Ridgeline. Yeah. But unlike a Honda Ridgeline, they don't have an axe to grind, and they're not going to actually try to make it really good. Right. It's literally for just being like, you want a cheap truck? Here's, Here's a cheap, cheap truck. truck. See what happens. Yeah. Try it out. It's about time they did that because the original Ranger. Sorry. Yeah. yeah what, that's what that was. So, But the idea of you financing a base model vehicle, that is bad. Uh, I mean, at the same time. 3% interest, right? Right. On on if you have decent enough credit, 3% interest, 
if you have a 401k at work, you can get more out of the market and finance at 3%, 3% to get a vehicle. 3% is pretty much free money. And if you're doing it at 3%, it's you're not going to have estate. maintenance costs on an older vehicle. So you're instead but, paying for the newer vehicle in monthly payments rather than on the older vehicle, you're paying for maintenance costs. But you drive this vehicle off the lot and immediately the value is... Sure. Right. It's sure. But that's what good insurance is for. And then you drive it for five years and you don't have that much of maintenance costs over those five years. And then you trade it. Those are the two models, right? Buy a cheap car for cash, buy a brand new car and don't have the maintenance right. costs for three to five years. Right. But you, okay, let's say for argument's sake mm -hmm. that he does get this truck for $22,000. Right. But he's not going to. He's, let's say he's... They'll, somehow he gets out of there with a new truck for twenty five thousand, mm -hmm. with tax, right? And then you trade it, you sell it in. It's worth maybe twelve. After how long? I don't know. I don't care. This is just my argument. <laughs> See, I've only been sipping beer in this, and I'm talking like this. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> or you just buy. A Tacoma right. from 2006, which will stay the same price. But also probably cost you very close to the same money in today's market. A 2006 I Tacoma know, yeah. could easily be a $17,000 truck right now. Right. But he didn't pay $17,000. He paid $25,000. Right. Right. And that truck... That maybe, got him a 2012 Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> in today's dollars. That's the problem. Right. We're, we're just two different... I, I'm one of these no-debt guys. Yeah. And you're not wrong, but I'm I'm only advocating for the other side. Although I'm renting a house and not owning it, so you know, like right. the other side, the other exactly. position. You have no debt, but you have no like, capital either. You right. can make the argument. <laughs> uh, the only point I'm trying to say, and I don't disagree with you. Like my right. cars, I buy for cash, but you could make the argument buying new, knowing you're not going to have maintenance costs for three to five years, and financing during that time frame the residual value you have on that vehicle that you paid off. Now I'm still not advocating that you can buy an eighty thousand dollar whatever suburban mm -hmm. and and have it make sense but. right i see i see your point especially about the maintenance thing but this maverick is also untested we don't know what's going right. to be recalled and this is fur right and it's it's a something's going to be it's a fucked on that 0. 0.7 liter yeah. turbo three some weird shit right. yeah it's going to be yeah yeah very legal very cool says turns out i'm probably inheriting a first generation ooh is rad First gen Astro van. Nice. With the all wheel drive option from a neighbor. Second base mobile. <laughs> Who inherits a car from the neighbor? That's what I want to know. Might need a new tramp. Might will. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to turning it into a capable ski camper. All right. Yeah. 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 I mean, those weren't high riding uh, vehicles, but still, you know, a set of snow tires yeah. and with all wheel drive. You're pretty much driving a big Subaru at that point. You just got to find somebody who knows about those old GM products. And fix the problems that need fixing, and you're pretty much gonna. Uh, you're gonna be at a minimum minimum twelve thousand oh, dollars if yeah. you really want to make this thing sick. But do you remember those things with the Hell giant? Yeah. With the giant, like the headlights were disproportionately large. The yeah, vehicle. Yeah, I think they were. I think they were still like sealed beams or something. And the like rims that. were just like oh, GM was like, God. I'm just gonna make this anyway. Oh, this is what it is. This is our the callback. This is a palate cleanser <laughs> slash inter, intermezzo. <sighs> it's like a sorbet. No, but this our, is uh, I, I'm here. not trying to dismiss Yingling. I I <laughs> I like that they're a craft brewer. They're, um, not. they're not even close. They're a big brewer who pretends to. It depends on how you define it. Did you get it up there? No, we didn't. Probably a little bit lower. It's always lower. That's a big can. Uh, oh, you're right on. Right on I get mic. that a lot. <laughs> Raging Eagle from Yingling Mango. Yingling is technically an independent craft brewer, according to the Independent Craft Brewers Association, because of the number of barrels they make a year, Correct. not because of their ethos. Correct. But here, and I'm not trying to say one or the other. But this is sort of like if somebody was like, "Hey, do you have a mango flavored beer?" Yeah, I do. Can you freebase it and just make it pure base <laughs> mango beer? Yeah, uh, I can do that. Yeah. Here you go. This is six feet of bubble bubble gum for you, <laughs> for not you, them. Not them. That's exact that bubble gum. That's exactly that attempt at flavor. That's the exact same consistency. 
Meanwhile, I got a ruling from the beer pope Ooh. over here from Matt. He yeah. says, uh, he says, export is an ale and Milson Canadian is a lager. So they're Ooh. different beers. Wow. Hmm. Not Ben 101 says, I need to get laid now that the pandemic is over. <laughs> Any advice? Um, I'm going to go out this weekend, but I need to rebuild my confidence to talk to girls. Just talk to them. I don't know, man. Just talk to them. Don't do a beer review podcast. Yeah. <laughs> don't, That's very, don't that will not help with my videos. videos. It does not help. Don't show them my videos. No, but just literally like. <laughs> don't be the guy who just says, hey, you're cute. Look at this thing on my phone. Just literally have a conversation about anything and you'll figure out in the first 30 seconds. She's interested. She's not. Mm -hmm. And you move on. You should borrow that previous guy's Chevy Astro van. Yeah. That'll yeah. get you laid. With the, if this van's a knock and don't With bumper the, sticker. Oh, that's right. You, and, yeah. If you have that Blast van, it. you have to have the bumper mm -hmm. sticker. Blasting how bizarre coming out of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the Venga Boys. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, I need to put that on the mix when I eventually get a Delica mm -hmm. and just roll up to the <laughs> That's actually Remember we used to do that thing? Well, I, I did do that thing, but um, you did it and Mike Bufano did it that one time where you just made the cars buck against their emergency brakes <laughs> in front of us. <laughs> well, well, he his well, he was driving a, a, a YJ Wrangler, so he just like was just Clutch dumping this thing across the school's parking lot, just looking like scream, a dog dragging scream, its ass. Scream, like, scream, yeah, scream. yeah, yeah. No, but that actually. Or maybe he had it four wheel drive low. My <laughs> my ex girlfriend in my C seven Corvette. My ex girlfriend. So I think I've told you this. Like when like the bros in a WRX when you pull up to a light and they're like, I have a Corvette like uh, twenty fourteen. Um, you'll pull up to a light and they're like revving their engine at you. I have literally only negative interest in street racing. Like I'm not going to street race you. It's dangerous. It's stupid. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. Like yeah. it's, I, I don't know who you are and how you drive. So no. So my favorite thing to do would be to rev the engine back. And then she got real mad at me one time for this is I would play like Taylor Swift or some type of like super girly song <laughs> and roll the windows down and just gotta <laughs> give them a look. And then the light changes and they hit it. And I would just see how slow I could accelerate away from the light. Like, <laughs> so they have a great story to tell. They're like, this super girl, like girly dude in a corporate. I just like kicked it. I just like, I was like so far. And like, and I, I don't have to street race you. And I yeah, just yeah. go to normal speed away. But she got real mad one time because I played the, I don't think it was Taylor Swift, but it was another, it was a very girly artist. And I played, and I think she th somehow thought I was like emasculating myself. And I was like, I don't care. I don't at all yeah. worry about this right now. Yeah. It's it, like giving the Subaru blue balls. Yeah, yeah. like I'm entirely comfortable Subaru in my masculinity in this blue, car. Yeah, I don't really care balls. one way or another. Yes. Good question, Ben. Hello, Steph Schrader. It's been a long time. How are you doing down there in Austin? I miss you. Uh, nice donation. I'm nice. thinking about attending a it's home. Nice. I, I'm thinking about a, attempting to homebrew. Okay, so first time home brewer. Oof, you're in Texas? Yeah. That's going to be hard. So online, what do I need to do? Online. What's what's my advice for homebrewing first time warm climate? The it's internet. so warm. It's very hard to control the no basement other bacteria and whatnot. So something with a lot of hops, maybe. I mean, IPA is not hard to homebrew because right? it's the, the flavors are so powerful that if you fuck up, doesn't like the hops can cover okay you now but like so like i'm always a big advocate so when i judge stuff and <laughs> when i judge competitions i love a, a great light american lager because it's i know that's really difficult to do that it's a super clean way it means that your shit is tight mm. because if it's no good, it's very easy to tell mm -hmm. in the light american lager it's very easy to point out any flaws yeah. you're keeping everything clean Exactly. Yeah. So that, that tells me that you're, you're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, and, you know, is it going to win best in show at a competition? Very rarely because mm -hmm. it's a light American lager, right? It's like, is the toy poodle ever going to win? You know, fuck that guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not going to happen. But, I mean, it should be. Competitions should be the best of the style. 
Right. It's it's the dog show. Most uh, homebrew competitions are, are, are should, should be a dog show model. Mm -hmm. This is the best possible Weimaraner that you can have. Yeah. And it, it's not like a Weimaraner versus a, a Chihuahua. Yeah. It's this is the best Chihuahua. This is the best Weimaraner. Which one's the best of their style? Mm -hmm. However, there's a lot of bias against things like light American lagers because they're like, brr, it's, brr, it's yeah. not very flavorful because because there is that hedonic component mm. in the in the judging, yeah. you know, there's a handful of points there. They're just like, how well did you like the beer? And it's like, that's well, yeah. not my favorite. <laughs> but don't you think that'll evolve in like 20 years, Maybe. 10 years? Because it'll be Stops like change all the time, right? In so, the in the car analogy. Oh, I like be, this. I want to hear. I want to hear your like, thing at a car show. So the thing that should win but never wins. Here's here's my it's very hard to do cleanly. And I and again, I'm no pro with any of this. But here's my analogy, right? 1975 American beer was nothing but terrible, right? Yes. So this in the same known. in the same league, there's a lot of like late 60s, early 70s American cars that are in that like oh really? yeah. Oh. But in 20 or 30 years, when they're even more rare and even more sought after, and like this generation or a little bit younger than us starts having kids and those kids get to like 15 years old, they're going to look at those cars yeah. and they're going to be like, that that's a Ford LTD. That's a, that's a country squire. They're going to have Dodge Polara. So I don't have yeah. like one car to Slant say like six two twenty five. but it's in the same way that like the a, shittiest of all the slant like, six, even because it's bigger, like a DeLorean, right. a DeLorean is not a good car, No, but a DeLorean has an appeal because our generation, like, like there was a group of people that grew up with back to the future yeah. and associate that car to the movie. Right. Yeah. And in the same way, there's going to be this group of people that are like, Oh man, like it, it. I'm not saying that Bud Light I is ever going to go away. I feel that way toward Guinness. I don't think it's a great Bud Light is not going away anytime soon. Uh, right. Oh, I'm not. I'm not suggesting it should. I I like Bud Light, but what I'm saying is there will be this category where there won't be a stigma associated to American beers being only subpar. I'm talking specifically about the style, which is right. American light lager, and that's what I'm saying. But don't you think some of that comes from the fact that prior to like Maybe. the 80s, there was no sort of other American option? Uh, they're also mostly adjuncts and uh, All right, yeah, yeah. interesting. All right, you're right. You're in right. General, right. And they're it's, still making them with rice and everything else, and it's not right. Uh, and that, that yeah, that's yeah. that's sort of a, almost a hallmark of an American lager is the adjunct content. Yeah. So, so Steph, to answer your question, I guess you want something that's going to ferment fast, right? You want that alcohol level to get up fast. Yeah. Um, and you want to be super, super clean and maybe the hops will inhibit, you know, if you do something super hop, you might inhibit some bacteria, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, you know, there's some good breweries in Texas, but you need to have real, air real brewers have glycol jackets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on yeah. their tanks. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, homebrew, not, not a lot of homebrewers do, <laughs> maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, but, we've got uh, two more Tom questions. Uh, one sounds like a little bit of a joke, and then the other one uh, is actually a pretty good one. So first one, they're being cheeky. Um, this 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 has a bit of that Massachusetts sass, so maybe they're from up there. Evening, gentlemen. Do I need a chemical engineering degree to get a job that involves drinking beer on the clock? Men? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so off asking this guy. work in a brewery <laughs> in any sort of a role where you can advance into a management position and you can get on to what's called the sensory team mm -hmm. and a component of your job will be at certain intervals throughout the day. You won't be drinking much, but you will need to go in there and verify the results of that brew. You will go in there and you will have multiple different batches that you'll be testing and you will be ensuring that that beer meets the standards for quality that that company has. You could easily get that job. Or you beco could become a brand ambassador and literally your job is to buy other mm -hmm. people your beer mm -hmm. and sit there and drink with them. Sales, just going around, just, talking to people. Not even sales, just being the face, you know. There's there's, yeah. there's sales, there's face people, and there's the actual people that do the the, the hoofing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, Yeah. So, yeah, you, you don't have to. It helps. I don't know. I'm not on the clock right now. I'm on vacation. Mm -hmm. But uh, Net EVX asked Tom, "Have you ever had a chance to get your hands on some Treehouse Brewery?" Shout out to my uh, cousin-in-law Chris Goonan, who uh, Chris actually this is his wife Mora, who hooked me up with some Treehouse. 
when I was in Plymouth last week. I have a can of it. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I brought it home. So I have not had a chance to have any. I used to get a Trillium when I was out there quite a bit, but I uh, have not had any Treehouse recently. So I do have a can, though, in the car waiting. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably enjoy some of that when I get home. Case but, White. Uh, it's pretty culty. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. You better finish this off. Do we? No, do we? Uh, no. Right. No. This costs $3, by the way. <laughs> this Freaking! It's, it's not worth the like a worth stabby Mc ten inch dildo of a beer. Oh, God, and look uh, at how aggressively it's angry a very aggressive. That, that eagle. Eagle I, honestly, this is a knockoff of the Philadelphia Eagles logo, I think. <laughs> uh and America. I mean, look at it, America. I'd be well. It would be surprising if they actually did knock it off, but that really does look like it. it definitely has the yeah Philadelphia Eagles. Apparently, this is one of the, Jesus Christ. Is it? Here we go. Unused. I dropped it. Was that my camera? I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. You can pour it out. Like, well, On the floor? <laughs> I the almost bonus. dropped the beer and uh, it got a little foamy. It's warm in here. It's very foamy. It is warm. Yikes. Anyway, like I was saying, this uh, Raging Eagle is uh, apparently one of Dick Yingling's kind of pet projects. Is it? Yes. Uh, and uh, Any on the table? It's not great. No. So air conditioning is a thing. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> is this the regular chats? Yes. <laughs> Just people okay, throwing so shade? Still and all. <laughs> still and all. Now you're going to have to chug this. I don't know what to tell you, but that's it's, the no, rule. It's too if you dropped yeah. it. Yeah, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> It's 4 a.m. in Poland. Please let me sleep, Jakub. <laughs> Jakub Rodak. It's at, you're either from Poland or from uh, uh, Shendo. <laughs> <laughs> only only people in this county even know Shendo. Uh, we got a handful of Polish people around here for sure. More than And handful. Lithuanians. Hey, great segue. Highest, highest Lithuanian Orthodox population in the United States. Lithuanian Orthodox. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Up, in, oh, up north, you do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chapton, that area. That's a great segue, don't you think? <laughs> For there the, you go. I'm going to try not to drop this this time. It too is sweating. It's very sweaty. All these beers are very sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Lithuanian latte. I think you're high. Hold on, let me look. I love. Uh, a little bit lower. It's called Lithuanian Latte. It's from yeah. Samuel Adams. I put my Sam Adams hat back. So this is a this is a uh, Boston Brewery special. This is one of those ones that they only do trial it and make it and let people try it out. There you go. Warm here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a Baltic style porter. Now, usually a Baltic porter would be like eight or nine percent. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not unprecedented to have a six percenter, and uh, lots of Lithuanians around here. In uh, well, are we? Uh, where are we? The county. Where's Mr. Southern, regular southern part in eastern Pennsylvania? Uh, east here in Schuylkill County and the surrounding area, and uh, um, uh, they all came to work in the mine. Basically, eastern mm -hmm. you got eastern Europeans. Lots of Lithuanians, lots of Polish people, and lots of Scotch Irish, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the mix. So it's like every town, every little coal town has an Irish church and a Lithuanian church. Mm -hmm. And they moved in. They were like, "We really like these row houses. <laughs> we're a big fan of Italian food for some reason. We love, yeah." And but like Halushki, you know, mm -hmm. if you have Halushki, Halupki stuff, mm -hmm. that's all Polish Lithuanian food. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. I caught a got the black. Uh, I caught a uh, yeah. I got the black. Is that what it is? <laughs> Yeah. Pioneer Question tunnel. Here, I don't know if you got to it. Uh, Kate White says, and this may be the one we just did. Uh, thoughts on a good beginner beer? I'm 22 years old on the 12th and want to try something easy on me. I had a peanut butter chocolate stout and it puked back up <laughs> because I have weak alcohol tolerance. Yeah. Flight. Yingling Flight. Any, okay. I wouldn't really recommend Yingling Flight As a, in general. Okay. It's not my favorite. I mean, if you're saying beginner beer, are you saying I don't drink beer? That's, that's the way I read that. Yeah. 
Well, what did we drink? Premium. Did you? <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that either. It's fine. We drank your dad's beer. We drank Miller Lite. I was drinking literally whatever was there. And then Bush Light because it was the cheapest thing and I couldn't afford anything else. And I remember like Bud Light being like the fancy, smooth tasting beer, literally. Mm. And it's a, I mean, technically a premium in, in the alcohol world. And that's the category it's in. But I mean, it's, it, that would be the easiest, lightest drinking beers. Don't but, think, uh, case, don't think you have to drink. Yeah. I mean, you don't enjoy it. Don't drink water. Right. But as you said, some beers are an acquired taste. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's beer is yeah. kind of an acquired Heavier taste. Heavier beers. First time I forgot Trump, we were drinking raspberry iced tea in Toronto. No, Scarborough. Yeah, yeah. We we're in Scarborough drinking Scarborough, like upper the suburb? Canadian. Was it upper Canadian raspberry iced tea. See, I had and some sort of malt beverage. There's Labat Blue too. Yeah. I had I don't some, recommend I had doing some... what I did, which is uh Throwing up and uh, saying an act of contrition to the toilet. Uh, but, it out. Well, you know, we worked it out. Yeah, I got absolution. <laughs> I mean, it. my advice is keep trying beers, see if you like it. And if you don't, don't drink beer. Drink what yeah. you like. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's, I mean. There's a lot of other options now. There's like the ready to drink category. There's seltzers. There's all sorts of other. Try something else if you don't like it. I agree that I, I, I also there's a lot of malt beverages that are not quite as beer flavored now, right? Right. So I don't want to. I'm not a White Claw representative here, but uh, um, you mean truly or truly? Yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Sorry. you. Sorry, counsel. <laughs> truly. I'm just kidding. The company kidding. man over here. Um, I'm totally joking. Um, but you know, seltzer may be maybe a good intro to uh, those kind of flavors and knowing your tolerance and getting a you know flavors that you're more used to, you know, mm -hmm. and then yeah. branching out into regular beers. Mm -hmm. And according to the government, that's still a beer. Because well, it's made with it's a malt beverage. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah, still a beer. Good question. Andrew Palmer says, "Hope everything is well on the East Coast." Yep, yeah, it's just hard. Thank yes. you for your donation. It is hot as hell. <laughs> Sweating. Sweating. Uh, it's good for you, though. <laughs> Car Foolery says, an auto M as an auto, auto MR2 guy, I can confirm. Just left it in second gear. Nice. Yeah. Just, good wow. good. just held it. Held just, it. Spin the torque. Just well done. Yeah. But it made it just fine, I'm sure. Nerdy Hillbilly again. Thanks for, thanks for like multiple super chats. I appreciate it. It says, I haul my tools, luggage, and people for my road job. Oh, this is the guy who wants... Uh, uh, is an escape Bronco under the truck body. The problems is the two liter engine, mm. which it was the 2.3. Yeah. Mm. Confirm. Yeah. I mean, get it, get an extended warranty then. I don't know what Ford's warranty is anymore in new Maybe cars, but no. get an extended warranty and run it out. And then when it's done, sell it. Yeah. Car foolery. Thank you for the donation. I work tonight. I hope to catch the 100th pod live. Yes. We need to do some a little bit of scheduling to make that happen. Because I want to do it at a remote location, uh, just to do something special, and it's not a podcast if Nick isn't here. So this doesn't count as the hundredth RCR podcast. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, we're not really. What are we? Chop liver? Huh? Not we're really not the Roman. <laughs> it's a everyone. It's, everyone it's, it's knows a different this. feel because the reg. Well, sometimes I drink on the on the regular podcast, but normally it's during the day, and there's a different feel to it. Yep. And in this one, we're mostly talking to ourselves and not really engaging that much with the chat. Thank you. Sound like you I'm sorry. Drinking beer on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Regular. Yeah. But not the Roman. <laughs> it's pretty good. It was a good Roman impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't hate me for that one, Nick. <laughs> well, Tom, actually, Tom can sing. Like that would be the thing if Nick was around. He'd bring the guitar. We can harmonize. Yeah. Get better on the podcast. <laughs> Just a regular. Leyland G says, with a generous donation, thank you. Nice. Nice. Dang, at least <laughs> I caught you all this time. I bought a 2015 Honda Fit 6MT. Very nice. To replace my 2012 Chevy Sonic. Good choice. Ooh. I love it. I miss driving manual. 
with the veterans plates and rainbow decals, I intimidate too many bros. <laughs> nice. Good Dude, that's move. That's a great car. And yeah. Welcome back to the world of manual. Hell yeah. Honda fits great. It was a little bit too small, and uh, I needed the all-wheel drive to ground clearance for the stuff we do. Um, but, yeah, I, I missed the fuel economy. And the only thing, the only fault I really have about the Honda Fit is their their seats are pretty thin. It was a small car that yeah. had to make up their their room yeah. somehow. They couldn't really put a lot of upholstery in thin there. Thin seat. Thin so seats. It's I'm wondering though. It's like a coach. It's like air, airplane ass. seats. Yeah. I want I want um, auto insurance companies to start offering discounts, right? Because like at this day and age, mm -hmm. driving a manual transmission is kind of a good theft deterrence, yeah. right? Because there's very few people left that can drive mm. a stick shift. Yeah. So interesting. Give me my discount, Keiko. Totally. I want that. Gab says, I'm sorry, Dad. Don't be mad. I'm getting a DL650. So it's too rural, but I need to pass trucks on the highway. Plus, I can get one sub 2K. Sorry, Brian. I'm a tree. Yeah, I know. I know. No. Fine. Whatever. I'm kind of over motorcycles right now. There's a guy with a certain motorcycle I want to ride. But yeah, Fine. And I think when he said DL650, he means DR650. But all right, you'll pass trucks on the highway. Fine. It's a bike that may wheelie from time to time, but, you know, whatever. It's it's a single-cylinder, big, thump-thump, dual-sport bike. To me, it feels a bit like a tractor um, or lawnmower. Yeah. Even some lawnmowers are 650 single cylinders. They're just mine is a single cylinder. My riding mower. Yeah. Yeah. There's there there are lawnmowers that have like governors on them. They're, they all have governors on them. Yeah. To a degree. Yeah. So you can just Take, mod your lawnmower. Yeah, the old ones it was just like a throttle stop, so you just took that off, and then you could rev this thing to tilt the cylinder like tilt it shreds its piston rings, but. Mine did that on its own. <laughs> oh no, so, I've killed Wilson. No, mine did that legitimately. Exactly oh, 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 two oh, oh, years oh. in on the warranty, I was mowing and all of a sudden I just went <laughs> and just everything was done. Poor guy. Here's a good one. Matthew, Matthew Malone. Yeah, take it. I just turned 21. I'm having trouble finding beers I like. Everything seems too bitter. Do you have any tips or should I just grow up? <laughs> There's a lot of beers out there that aren't bitter. Any any American beer, a lager, Bud Light, Coors Light, Bud Heavy, are not going to have a lot of hops to them. I, and I think that the bitterness, it really is an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of thing that you get used to. In fact, you'll, you'll have some people like, uh, you're like way into beer dudes, will like have like hop fatigue almost that they just can't taste any bitterness anymore mm -hmm. because they just drink IPAs all the time. So... I mean, things that are bitter, if something's bitter, your body is saying, this is poison. Mm. Because all, you know, alkaloids, not all alkaloids are poisonous, but all alkaloids are bitter. And some of them are poisonous. Ergo, things that are bitter, your body is like, this is poison. Mm. And bitterness is one of the first things to go as you age, your, 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 your perception of bitterness. Mm. And so, and that's because... You've aged beyond reproductive usefulness, and uh, who cares if you die, right? Yeah. Uh, from a Darwinian standpoint, so um, those your palate will change over time. Everyone's palate changes over time. The more you drink, the more you understand about beer uh, or wine or wh whatever you you drink. Um, and but a, a lot of those tastes are to be acquired. So I would, you know, I would not throw something back after the first time you taste it. But I would also, you know, trust yourself to, uh, you know, if you really are super sensitive to bitterness, like my wife's a super taster. She hates coffee and IPAs and everything. And it doesn't make her any better than anyone else. It's just her, her mm -hmm. she's really sensitive to bitterness. And so um, I would say look for styles that are, are, are made to be less bitter. Any, most any of the Euro lagers, you know, American lagers. I did notice that when I went to uh, the UK, most of the beers I have, and even ones that called RPA, were like watery. And even beer. even an English bitter is yeah, like I was not very I, bitter. I was compared to an American IPA. Mean, they rely on the malts. You want to look for a maltier kind of style, like mm -hmm. a, a, a porter, for example. Great, great segue. Mm -hmm. Great mm -hmm. segue, Tommy. Mm -hmm. I was 
unbelievably disappointed with like I want an English bitter and what I got was just felt like a lager. It yeah. says bitter. It is but it's English not bitter. as bitter as an American mm -hmm. IPA for sure. Eric, did you get one of these? I did, yes. So this is Lithuanian latte, the Baltic Porter. It has cocoa and it also has cold brew coffee. Um, it is to me the coffee's there. The coffee is there. It's a great example of a porter, though. And for mm -hmm. me, the difference between a porter and a stout, you may be wondering, maybe you weren't. For my palate personally, the difference between a porter and a stout is the color that comes into my head. And a stout is black and a porter is brown. And I don't mean that it tastes that it looks brown or black. I mean it tastes brown or it tastes black, mm -hmm. right? A stout will have a roasted quality to it. Should always have roasted barley, some kind of black malt or something to um, have that really roasted character to it. Whereas a porter is, uh, I to me, like a great porter tastes like a soft pretzel. It's like a, yeah. a caramelized more than uh, roasted. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like toasty versus roasty. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great, I think, you know, this regular beer is about you by Sam Adams. But uh, <laughs> I think it's a great example of a, a toasty kind of porter that doesn't have a lot of – it has coffee in it, cold brew coffee, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have like the roasted edge that you'll find in a lot of, um, uh, you know, a stout or anything like that. So um, to me, I think it's a great example. And it, it's got a lot of body to it, which is true to its kind of Baltic roots mm -hmm. uh, and the, you know, the, the – the, there's a lot of – mid palate to it mm -hmm. is my kind of assessment mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan i like this one this might be one of my favorite ones we had today yeah but you know we haven't tried yet that's true there's there's it's coming there's some don't worry there's some special ones on the way even if brian has given up on us and, and left the scene what's a classic porter um you're, I think sorry, you want to look, if like, you're looking for what sorry, I'm talking about in terms of the um, toasty versus roasty, an American porter often will have a lot of hop to it. And so that can be, that can add a little tinge of bitterness, which puts it more in the black IPA category almost. But uh, what's a classic porter? Uh, Fuller's porter is very good. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. let's see. Um just as needed yeah yeah i think that that's that's reasonable yeah but anyway um it's it's hard though because uh you know not every brewer especially if you're a micro brewer you know there's subtleties there between the styles i think that are often lost but this one i think is nailed it yeah no, a lot of those experimental ones that they do in Boston. Oh, Bell's Porter is very good. And Ed oh, Adams my goodness, is I'm very so good. Sorry. Too. Talk about experimental. <laughs> Stop you know, farting, dude. Remember, remember the time I farted Jen Chalik out of Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> what? Yeah, you'll have that. <laughs> Chased her this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just couldn't stop farting, and Jen Chalik had to leave the Dunkin' Donuts because I made the boo smell so bad. <laughs> but I couldn't hold them in; they were just like an exploding tire. It's just like 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 a tire with a nail, and I was just like, and I wasn't making any noise, but I'm like, damn it! I mean, it happened. Oh fuck! <laughs> she just left. Yikes. The restaurant. Shout out to Jen Chalk. Yikes. <laughs> also, shout out to Matt Happel. He said he texted me. He says, witness me, witness me. Hello, Matt Happel. Notice me, Senpai. In Matt Happel, we trust. And no, Matt Happel will not tune your car. But actually, yes, Matt Happel. If he so chooses and if you got the cash, you can make it happen. And the gods among men, the god among men will tune your car. Uh, Matt Happel is the tuning cars what Neil Lutz is to being an adult. <laughs> so that's that's impressive. Yes. He is the best at being an adult. Yes. He was an adult when he was 13. <laughs> he was tucking his shirt in middle school. Shout out to oh, yeah. who he hung out with yesterday. And I casually said, because he like inherited his family farm. And I'm like, so you got some barn space there, Neil. Mm. Yeah, maybe I can store some cars there. And he's like, we'll talk. He's like, awesome. Yeah. Car space. Car space. All right, you want to go grab your two? Yes. 
we're we gonna do. Ones? I think these are the two special ones that we need to do. Okay, well, I think I then think that'll we can wrap it up. Alamama so. Grab or something says Bell's kind of got over flavor. Well, but Ben's were... doing that. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, someone says, and you Bell's can... got over flavored. Yeah, but, but Bell's Porter's fine. Uh, there's a couple of local ones that I like in Iowa that are good. Royal Roots from uh, Confluence is very good if you're in Iowa. Uh, the next one is Hop and Frog again, Akron, Ohio. Peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate cakes. <laughs> it's got all the things in there. And it's also... God damn it. Sorry. It's also imperial. It's 8%. Where'd it go? Oh, just on the it table. Just on the table. Right, just on the table. Uh, okay. no. Golden shower malt. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong one. Yeah, it's right. All right, I find there's three, but we don't have to do this one. Oh. I think we're past this on the uh, style. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we can do that later. We'll drink that later. After. All right. Oh, my goodness. Three it's cakes. like... So this is... Before we do the fancy mm -hmm. ones... It's this, like a this birthday last, cake. Peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate cake, stout. From Say that ten fast. Yeah, peanut okay. butter, hazelnut, chocolate... Yeah. Do you want to even... Do you want to try this one? Hmm? You a little bit here, outclassing me over here with these beers that you've brought. <laughs> no, I'm just figuring we we'll let this breathe a minute. Ah, hmm, it tastes like cake, it smells like cake. Wow, it really smells like cake. Is there Damn. sugar in this? Oh, almost certainly lactose, right? No, but like, where are they? Yeah. The rich, decadent character of this gourmet wow. cake-flavored stout will fill your senses with friendly, familiar flavors and aromas of yesteryear. That, this tastes like if Cold Stone Creamery tried to make a beer, <laughs> this is what they would have made. That's a really good uh, description. Stereotypo says if you want something sweet, go for Innocent Gun. What is that? Oh, Innocent Gun is a... Uh, yeah, I've seen that. That's true. It does what it says. Peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate, cake, stout. Yeah. It smells it, like a spoiled kid's birthday party. Yeah, definitely. Augustus Gulf. Like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the birthday party. Is that the kid that falls into the yes. chocolate river? Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. Oh, nobody, nobody's seen uh, that movie yet. It's like Augustus Gloop's mm -hmm. asshole. <laughs> After he <laughs> fell in the chocolate Seriously. river. <laughs> when he got <laughs> out. This is what his fart smelled like. Matthew I Martin. mean, it does what it says, right? It tastes like cake. It really does taste like a Betty Crocker oh, devil's man. food cake. Yes. With Nutella on it. Yes. It tastes like ho-hos. There's a lot of hazelnut. It's gotta a be a thousand hazelnut. calories. <laughs> uh, yeah, TTV doesn't require you to label <laughs> the calories. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, that's it's like, like, Four scoops of Nutella. <laughs> it's on very like, Nutella. It's yeah. so heavy. Woof. All right. Buzz's girlfriend. Hey, there's 69 that? viewers right now. Hell yes. <laughs> One of your uh, viewers said the same exact thing at the same time. Well done, Paul Anthony Another Carbone. Another 74. Well, there's 69 likes. That's whatever I just had is the exact amount I can handle with that. Yeah, that's why I poured only a little yeah. bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Ben, you want to take it away here with your presentation or you want me to go up? And you go for it. Do you want to do So the... I will explain. So this is, let's start here. This is, if everybody's had Dog Bichette Worldwide Stout, this is picture that same beer, Worldwide Stout, but now Utopias, Sam Adams Utopias Barrels, this is aged in those, in those Utopias Barrels, but it's still Worldwide Stout. So it's a pretty special beer. In terms of How distribution, many, would you see this where, where very regularly? This? this would not be. This was literally a one-off. Hey, we just merged the two companies. Let's try this out and see what happens. Sam and so Sam Calagione and 
Jim Cook are the founders of the two companies, right? Uh -huh. Jim Cook, founder of, of Sam Adams. Sam is the founder of Dogfish. Um, they basically are both like kind of just beer nerds who want to just do their own thing. And this is one of the things that they did. They did a few. They did also did collaboration, which is another like they just did these like fun collaboration was before the merger though was it not no it was after, oh, it was after. This was, okay. that was the first like celebration beer of the merger sure. but they just basically like these are the things that the two of them who just like beer are like hey let's make this all right we're gonna make this and they just kind of do it for fun all right so first of all this is 18 percent. it's not to be taken lightly. no no right and worldwide stout has always been 18 19 kind of well, mostly, I guess it's, it's 18. That's about it depends far. on how it aged. As yeah. far as oh, I can smell it. Yeah. You're, right. But you're not going to find this in the beer store. Nobody is going to buy this. This is this is whatever came out to those distributors, those wholesalers first. They got it. Oh, my goodness. This and it was probably Dogfish Head distributors who were very much into that loop for beer and a few totally. others. But this yeah. is like there was not a whole lot of this made. Don't go looking. But if you find it on eBay, it's pretty special. Well, thanks, man. That being said, let's give an objective uh, <laughs> review. Unbiased. Right. Unbiased review of uh, aged in Utopias barrels. Whoa. That's running for, hot. For what that is, though, pretty smooth. Yeah, for um, what it is, quite a bit of the matterized flavor that you get in Utopias, mm -hmm. um, sherry, a lot yes. of sherry. Not as much of the port though. That's what I get, a Montalado. For the love of Mo God, God Montresor. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> it's, the love it's, of God. And that is it probably comes from the barrels, right? Mm -hmm. You would. That's not from the worldwide stout. That's from the barrels for sure. Yes. Montalado sherry. I mean, a Montalado is about eighteen percent, mm -hmm. which well, which is pretty close to what you what Utopias mm -hmm. would be. And so, I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a floor uh, growing on the uh, on the Utopias on in the barrel, kind of floor meaning the, the mm -hmm. microorganisms that grow on top of sherry while they ferment. Does it ferment in barrels, Utopias? Mm -hmm. Okay, so while it's fermenting. I mean, I mean that's bang on like sherry, and that could be. Oh, this is barrel twenty twenty, so that's not from aging. No, that's from being in the barrel. But the barrel, I mean, the other part is so those barrels are former barrels used for other purposes, whiskey, right, uh, bourbon. A lot of them. Utopias are barrels. barrels are previous liquor barrels, correct? That sure. Were, and a lot of times those they might get moved around multiple barrels, right? Because mm -hmm. you want to kind of mix it up to get that different flavor. So <laughs> there's there's no, remnants no in answer. I won't spoiler alert, but there's remnants in this of a beer that was first made basically in two thousand one. Sure. Right? So it and you just keep yeah. moving around, moving Solera, around Solera style. Yeah, yeah that's playing not... with it, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. And then because of that, those barrels end up with all of these different flavors. In sherry barrels, it's the same way. They mm -hmm. will they'll drain it. They'll drain it almost all the way, but there's still a little bit in there. So there's sherry in every one of the sherries that'll come out of the sherry mm -hmm. house. There'll be a little bit of the ancient sherry, right? Because they fill, it, they drain it, and then they'll fill it back up in the same barrel with a little bit mm -hmm. in there. And so, and they do the same thing. They drain it and fill it up, drain it and fill it up. And so, that's a, a process that ensures that it, not only does it ensure that the microbes stick around. Mm -hmm. Which is the practical purpose, but it's a it's a it's a maintaining the house aesthetic kind of, uh, mm. uh, and so. Well, and you, yeah, you keep doing that until that barrel, basically until that barrel reaches end of life. You keep doing that to try to add flavor, right? Until it starts know. leaking. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and then finally you're like, okay, it's done. But I'm telling you that if you've ever had sherry, this beer is like a stout mixed with a sherry. Yeah, um, that's a really good description. Yeah, basically as it is, that's what it is. Or a, uh, or a fino, maybe not a montalado. You know, he's super fancy, but like Singes fino, it's an it's it's an almond. Uh, not exactly a green apple, but a bruised apple, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and an almond. Really almondy mm -hmm. is what I get. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, everybody, it is brown. Well, it's no, black. is it? This mm. is black. This is about as black as you'll get. I want to get my big flashlight and shine it through it. 
That's what that's what people do it when you're judging beer. You get to take a little flashlight and shine through you so you can see if it's opaque or not, or you look at the SRM. Regular gun reviews. <laughs> our, lad, our lad here was really into guns for a while. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago. That. Yeah. You own mm -hmm. them? I had, well, oh, I had yeah. some. So. We went to the gun range and so yeah, show the camera. Yeah. That blocks a lot of light. Yeah. It's heavy. Uh, yeah. It's what you would call opaque. Yes. Black is just dark brown. That's true. What's the difference between a stout and an imperial stout? Imperial means more. Imperial means like big boner. <laughs> right? It means like, uh, so imperial IPA has like extra malt, extra hops. Imperial stout has extra malt, extra alcohol. Um, and so, and in Imperial, of course, IPA will have extra alcohol too. So it just basically means more alcohol is what Imperial means. And if you see double IPA, double IPA is not double the malt, double the hops, double. It means double I, the letter I, Imperial India Pale. Mm. This ain't no hat rack. Didn't know that. The more you know. Didn't know like a double black for sauce. Yes, exactly. So imperial means more. The uh, uh, what's the word? The ur, mm. ur of the beer. Urmartsen. Actually, if you get an Urmartsen, it's a, a double merts. Neshaminy Creek. Ever heard of him? Yeah, I think I've had a Neshaminy Creek uh, occasionally. Um, I think they bottled those. I think I may have got one at the Giant. I don't remember anything interesting about it. <laughs> hmm. But I have no is memory. Is it Mini or Nishamini? They're known for the John. Oh, okay. Their beer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't remember. It's uh, The double is for double I. I Imperial IPA. Oh, yeah, I'm this is amazing. Yeah. I'm very pleased that you brought this. That one, I think we should have still done it second to last, but that is pretty special for what it is. I'm, I'm trying I'm to think of a wine car analogy and I can't. Yeah, you can. You oh, know what I would say? Different notes and barrels. In this country? Yeah. In this country, I would say that's a Toyota Century. Yeah. You're, if you come across one yeah, in regular life, they're old. The new ones be, are old. Yeah. Well, because they have to be 25 years. It never came here. Space here. Cadet Pinball is pretty great. Right? Though. So there's, was it 3D Space Cadet? Hell yeah. But it wasn't 3D. Yeah. Not really. It was 3D. a laser disc. It was, it was just 2D. Laser you know, disc. They, but they called it Where? Space Cadet 3D. Uh, laser disc? Well, probably thinking of. I'm talking video, about yeah. Space Cadet Pinball on it said best oh, Windows game, yeah, Windows, best preloaded yeah, Windows yeah. game, isn't that? All right. I thought we were still yeah, in that was great. century. That was I was great. I was super confused. Oh, somebody just said best preloaded Windows game, and I was like, uh, yeah, Space Cadet 3D. Obviously Space solitaire. Space, Space Cadet. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but I, I get what you mean. Like even even if it's even if even in its own country, the century was meant to be aged mm -hmm. that the, the the one of the most or perhaps the most conservatively mm -hmm. made vehicles ever mm -hmm. you look at one from like 79 and one from 2009 it's like this is the same car yeah. they just rounded a little bit yeah but else. it's also yeah. if toyota a conservative company that's never going to make anything that doesn't always run right tried to make a rolls royce right that's yeah. what's so special about it. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Here's here's. I'm not saying this is the greatest beer, the greatest whatever, but it's this weird thing where, in this case, it was almost so. Toyota is. We're Toyota. We're going to try to make a Rolls Royce. This right. is. We're Boston beer. We're going to try to merge with Dogfish Head. We're going to make these weird collaborations where this is kind of the best of each of what. We do. Mm -hmm. Toyota's really good at making Corollas, but we're also going to figure out how to make a Rolls Royce. Rolls -Royce. But the, what the thing about the Century is, it has no presence unless yes. you're in the car. Unless you're this is this it, tastes like I'm drinking wine and I'm nine. 
the bottle you know, is just the same as a 60 very, minute bottle it's, it's a 60 minute heavy. bottle with a yeah. different lib it's, or a it's different a label. very uh almost oppressively alcoholic if you're not <laughs> yes. used to it if you're not used to big beers yeah you don't want that yeah that's you, not the beginner beer for whoever asked that question before no, this is for no, no. professional don't alcoholics don't try only. this at home kids <laughs> So, all right, professionals. Tom and I are going to finish this later without right. Brian, who doesn't want any more. Right. Don't, don't but give him any more. He'll pass out. We need to, couch. before we go any further, we need to try oh. Utopias. We've done this before. We've done this before, uh, but just tell us what this I mean, is. So, this before. is Sam Adams' Utopia. Oh, it's unopened. This has never been opened before. This is a 2019 batch. So, this gets released every two years. Um, and as we were talking about, this is aged in different casks. Um, basically, it gets rotated through um, a different cask. So it might be a whiskey cask. It might be bourbon. It might be all sorts of different flavorings. Um, this is basically Jim Cook, the founder of Boston Beer. This is his pet project. This is one of his passion areas. Um, this is something that is no expense spared. Take as long as you want. There are remnants of product from 2001. Probably, arguably, you could trace this to Triple Bach in 1994. This is that old as far as the thought, the concept of this is the best I can possibly make. So this is the highest percent ABV beer that we know of that is being sold in America. This is 28%, oh, right? Oh, this is 56 proof. It's the highest the yeast will go. Correct. And it has Ninja, I mean, basically... Like this can't be made with a standard yeast malt hop. This has to have yeah. ninja hops. It has to have crazy things in it to be able to ferment at this kind of. And ABV. it's not like beer where they just add spirits or booze or. No, something. there is no artificial no, shit. In no, this. and you'll yeah. find if you look at uh, you know the. Uh, He's opening it. It there it didn't go. Super, very very little low. carbonation. Very very little. But the uh, you know uh, the. Uh, Brewdog beers, the end of history, or Sink the Bismarck, or whatever right that are that are huge, I'm you, uh, huge beers. Those are cryo distilled. This is not. Whoa. This is just fermented. Well, that's for, is that for me? Or you want that for Tom? That's. It's that's not, not that much, Brian. Oh, All right. It's really not okay. bad. What's your opinion on the Mercure? Uh, it's a nice experiment for the wrong country. Like they had a My uncle Lenny had a Miracore. Did he? Cool. Yeah. My uncle Lenny is a car dealer in uh, Dundalk, Maryland. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the well, Ravens it's are country playing club Yo, cars I, I, I can't slash do L and L Motors. <laughs> you won't come down to Dundalk. <laughs> you can get a. We'll get you. Why buy a new car when you can get a quality used car in Dundalk? <laughs> is that what he says? Um, that was the commercial back in the day. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, shout out Uncle Lenny. He he is a central casting used car salesman. He's yes. got a big ass curly mustache. <laughs> Man, that is a world I can't like. Plaid pants. He's you know. I can I think yeah. I told you my uh, my car dealer story. Like I uh, I shadowed Whoa. a. Yeah, I shut up a brewery rep in college, and I remember going to a car dealership that she was the she was the spokeswoman for. Oh. Right? She was the spokesperson for this dealership, and the guy we're sitting in there, and she's talking about the car she wants to order, and I notice the guy keeps gravitating to me to have the conversation. I'm like, I'm literally, I'm 21 years old, and I'm shadowing her in her actual job. Why are you talking to me other than that I'm a male in the room, and you're like, it was just that like, that's why. Right. What what year are we in here? Yeah. This is fifty five. Yeah. I could just sit here and smell this. this. Oh man. So this is my favorite. So this is you want to talk about a sherry, right? Or a port, or this is like this is not something you're you're not gonna drink uh I'm you're not, not gonna, gonna drink, drink twelve ounces of this. This there's a question there. What's the MSRP of Utopias and was it sell for I the believe, secondary market? Um two hundred and thirty dollars or two hundred and fifty dollars this year is the MSRP. Oh, It'll be introduced this fall. And I think on the secondary market, people typically pay three to five hundred dollars depending on the batch year Fuck for the bottle. Hell. You poured us too much, my dude. There's yeah. It's like a, it has a little. It's like a little. Uh, it's a brew kettle. It's a brew kettle and it has a little opening here with Sam Adams inside it. <laughs> That's a 
it's a very special. So it's a copper clad porcelain. So this actually gets better with age. Um, it does not age out. And this basically, you can leave this sitting around and just drink it as a celebratory drink whenever you want to. But I mean, to me, what I love about it is, you know, so you were, you were talking earlier about Yingling, right? And it's not an independent craft brewery. This is one of those things where Jim Cook basically just says, we're doing this, we're making this. I don't care if it makes or loses money and it's the cost like, involved well, we is heavily something like this. Never. But I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not judging England. What I'm saying is in the same way, Sam Adams gets the same reputation. If right. You're not real. You're not real craft. You're not real independent. This, this is a is perfect a example. LFA. We don't yes. care. We don't care the cost. We don't care the time. We don't care what you have to put into that. You're making this. We're selling it to the public because it's special and we like it and it's cool. And we're going to do it. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what this is. This is, wow. This is for the love of beer. We're yeah, going to yeah. make this for the love of beer. This is not like drinking beer, though. No. It's like drinking bourbon. Yes. Yes. Or yep. This is very nice to toast things. Mm-hmm. It is. That's like an occasion. It is hot. <laughs> yes. It is hot in your mouth. And this Man, is and not this, a bad I think thing. the last time we had it, it was winter. Mm-hmm. This outdoors? Yeah. Fall? Yeah. yeah, you'd have St. Bernard's carrying this around, the revived skiers, <laughs> right? A little barrel. Well, right? and each each oh, year, man, if you just put it on your tongue and breathe in and out. It's twenty eight percent alcohol. It's gonna so do be this hot. too. Do this. That's... Take a take a breath in, drink a sip, and then exhale through your nose. You get that that sense, that smell, like through your nose, through your mouth. Yeah. Ah. It's there. The barrel notes really come through in terms of the amalgamation of barrels. There's a lot of nice oak character. Mm-hmm. Would that be considered a barley wine? Uh, barley wines are carbonated. Yeah, this I has mean, almost it, zero carbonation. It's it's a it's a sui generis, really. I mean, there's no mm. style that mm. says twenty eight percent. No. But it's the sim. It's a similar uh, process to barley wine in mm. terms of the fermentation. I would say you're just maxing out the yeast. But it is like the closest style that there would be is barley wine. Barley wine is carbonated generally. By the way, this is this has absolutely well, zero, zero carbonation. carbonation. Yeah. Um, and uh, this says <laughs> Utopia says the same maybe via Zamoretto. I'm not sure about that <laughs> because Zamoretto is probably. On the order of 35, 40 proof. I don't know. I don't know sui it generis. It's Latin. Look it up. It's one of a kind. <laughs> Doing uh, education <laughs> on non-beer too here. It's um this man's made of words. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart guy. Look, I, I, I do get a little loquacious when I've been drinking, but uh which is that is also a word. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but these are all. Are you looking he's, for the loquacious type? He's not using the long man. version of the words. These are accurate words. It's it's very strong, and it is a you know you wouldn't want to drink much more mm-hmm. than this much of it at a time. Like you're not going to get home from work, mm-hmm. Papa Utopias, and you will die. No, that's how much I got. This I got more. Of actually, I was at GABF, and Jim Cook himself was maybe a little inebriated. Hard to say. I'm not gonna call the guy out, but I was drunk too. It was GABF. You have to be. Uh, and uh, you know, you got the little GABF cup. He filled it right up with Utopias, and so I was like, "This is like fifty dollars worth of beer. Thank you." <laughs> They were pouring it right from pitchers, him and a bunch of very attractive mm. ladies there at the Sam Adams booth. Probably mm. lawn brewery reps. Yeah. Well, whatever they were. Women, <laughs> yeah. Women and men right out of college, like two to three years in, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so that's the this is the most I've had since then, but it really is. It's it's not, it's not, it's not a beer at all. It really you 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 should treat it like liquor. Yeah. So, yes, it was brewed like a beer. Mm-hmm. However, you should treat it like liquor. It's twenty eight percent. It's just something. Yeah, it's something different. If you find it, it's actually tough to find at a at a beer store. I mean, it's wholesalers get an allotment and that's all they get. So yeah. whatever they get, they get, and you, you have gotta, to go and find it. It's probably 
mean, it's good to know somebody if you want to get yes. yeah, it for sure. You have to be buying the special stuff for them to call you and say, hey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like you got to sell a lot of Heaven Hill to get Pappy, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's something it's something cool. It's something different to try. I love it. I, I, I do think there is a good mix of both the Sherry character, but also the, which is which was not present here, I mm -hmm. think. The bourbon -y character, mm -hmm. the 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 smoky, yep, smoky oak. Um, this is not what you would call a regular beer. Nope. This is like Brian driving the McLaren. Yes, uh, that's where we're at here. Yeah, it's something special. So a lot of Buffalo Trace here, but isn't Heaven Hill, Paul? Isn't Heaven Hill? Uh, at, you're right. You're right that it's mm -hmm. Buffalo Trace too. But isn't Heaven Hill the same distiller too? You're right though. You're right. And Paul actually, Paul made a really great comment before about different variety, different varieties of uh, grapes uh, having different characters mm -hmm. from the barrel. And it's the same kind of thing. All getting kind of congealed. and Well, in that case, barrels have different, you know, the different, well, different grape varieties will have different um, oxidative or reductive potential. Mm -hmm. right? So you'll have different kinds of aging in the same barrel. Mm hmm. It says, here's your Lefroy 12 in a shot glass. It's not as smoky as Lefroy, this one. But it's... Uh... Casey White says, oh yeah, thank you for introducing me to the video game Night in the Woods. Best game I've played in a long time. It's a very generous description of that, whether that is in fact a video game or not, or a interactive graphic novel. But I agree, yes, it was definitely groundbreaking in terms of its of its narrative style and it's also pennsylvania the video game if you want to call it the video game um <laughs> bush party yeah bush party does exist in the video game um and uh hmm. it's it, it, it almost takes place it you, you try to pinpoint where in pennsylvania um it's probably western pa um well the, the creators of the game are from pittsburgh so it, okay. it's more that side of the susquehanna than okay. here pittsburgh is to be fair in Ohio, <laughs> yes. culturally speaking, yes. is in the Midwest. Yes. Yeah, it, there's a little bit of Pennsylvania. There's a little bit of the. It's. I would say Pittsburgh is a Rust Belt. Yeah, more than Mid Atlantic. Oh yeah, but thank you. Love love the game, and it's also great that you know Pennsylvania does have video game developers. I can't. Yeah. I can't believe I was wrong about Heaven Hills is a separate distillery. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm sure you're right. Well, we've been at it for over two hours. Uh, what I a, enjoyed this. What a great! The yeah. best I've ever brought was. What the hell did I bring? That was like a mind killer. <sighs> <laughs> I don't remember, but I can't top Utopia <laughs> for sure. Yes, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, for this. No, well, I appreciate it. Big distillation energy over here. Yeah. It's yeah. not distilled. Big distributor energy. I was gonna say something different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. I, I feel I'm thrilled. Uh, it's uh, it's great. Um, something different yeah. to try. I it's Paul Anthony being Anthony around Anthony like Anthony higher Anthony end Spurman, cars. Sure. I've learned to not be intimidated by price point, and to recognize that a lot of what makes a higher end car is its presentation. And I wonder if I would appreciate this if it wasn't for that ball. Mm -hmm. It's part of the experience and maybe that's okay. Mm -hmm. That the bottle is this thing with these doors. And stuff. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a part of that of is, of course, if you're paying $250 a bottle or three fifty dollars from people reselling these things, yeah. It better have a presence as you pull it out. Right. It's going to look pretty. Yeah. No. But again, it, and a part of that is to say this is something different than, right, this this cap. It's not that. This is the only cap that is black that, that we use, right? Oh. Because it, it's something, it's to say in the same way, I don't think we have any more, the, the dogfish head, the the really heavy dogfish head. Has those, like. The, the yellow. With the, the, the It's the dogfish yeah, the head logo with the caution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And to say, like, this is different. It, it's again, I mean, I guess all I'm saying is it's something to say, like, this is an occasion. This yeah. is not, you don't, you don't drink this every night with right. your buddies. This is something different. But, but who cares about the price point? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Would I pay $250 for a bottle of Utopias? 
I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not super rich. <laughs> I am a uh, pre-tenure professor at a Midwestern research university. I'm no uh, tenure not, track. Tenure track, but not tenured yet. <laughs> um, and when if the provost sees this, maybe never. <laughs> <laughs> but um 250 bucks for a bottle of booze is a lot it is yeah if it's i think i you know somebody just mentioned lagavulin a six lagavulin 16 is about a hondo mm -hmm. i can get by on all on that but i you know, i would have trouble as a as a you know uh, somebody the hoi polloi are not yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's spent the, 250 it's bucks the, on that. It's the class, it's the cost benefit analysis, right? right? You oh this it is, costs that much to make. I guarantee no, you. No, that no, that but is I don't worth even it. like I don't even care. Like when we it, I, it does, but like it's not a money maker. This is not something that Boston Beer is doing to make money. This is again, this is legitimately this is a pet project for Jim Cook. This mm -hmm. is a, something that he's like, I want this, I like this, this yeah. is cool. But I what I mean to say is this is either Folks that have money and are comfortable with it, or right. folks that are passionate and once every six to eight years, they're mm -hmm. like, I'm going to buy one of those because this is cool and it's different and I want to try it. And they're kind of supporting the cause of we're going to make weird, outrageous, random stuff. Yeah. Right. Like that's sure. kind of in the same way that this, it's, I would argue, I don't care about the money factor. It's the same people that are lining up in front of a small brewery to get there before they sell out. Yeah. Right. Those are those are the same category of like, I'm going to do this because it's cool that you're not going to make it. And if I get here at noon, you may not have it. Right. Right. That's yeah. the category. Yes. I agree. I totally agree. The, the scarcity drives the price. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. But uh, somebody mentioned Bruclotic. I like I love I love a Bruclotic. Actually, it's one of my favorites um, because they don't it's not peated. It's, it's the best way to get a, a malt buzz without a uh, without peat. But mm -hmm. back to this beer. I mean, I'm very lucky to have media and other connections to Utopias and have have sampled it. Yeah. Oh, Tier Connell, that's a good one too. Tier Connell is a single malt uh, Irish whiskey. That's a good one. Yeah, there's not a good comparison to this because it's that that single malt or 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 a no, a really a good scotch. Whiskey. It's very different than those. Yes, it's this is closer to a port. I yeah. would say. Yeah. Even though the alcohol level is, is a little higher, port mm -hmm. generally comes in comes in around twenty percent. Right, it, it's much more like a port than a um, than a bourbon. Mm -hmm. Right, the bourbon has no sweetness to it, mm -hmm. but uh, actual sugar <laughs> to it. There's, right. there's carbs in here. Mm -hmm. Right, oh, yeah. uh, there's oh, yeah. plenty of malt left over from that. Just pumping that process and all feeding the yeast, ingesting you know? it, yes. it's probably a semi batch process they had that they had to develop over years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I picked ice wine in the Finger Lakes with uh, with Dave Breeden. Shout out to Sheldrake Point in the Finger Lakes, but uh, so I picked ice wine, and uh, that stuff comes in around forty bricks, and the yeast are like, nope. <laughs> nope, 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 yeah. nope, 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 nope. So you have to actually do it semi batch. You kind of start with you start with the first press, mm -hmm. which has a lot of water in it, uh, and, and then so you probably kind ninja of, yeast, that weird yeast that's going to live through all of a, that. You crap. would pick a very high tolerance yeah. yeast, obviously, but even still, there's so much osmotic pressure on the yeast. It's not mm -hmm. just the alcohol that kills it; it's the the there's so much sugar in there yeah. that they. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. beer on a slug, it's the same yeah. thing. The slug dries up, right? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. And so uh, the yeast are like, "Fuck that, <laughs> I'm out." And so um, I'm sure there's a there's a process to getting this fermentation started mm -hmm. that involves a lot of black magic fuckery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get it to 28, yeah. percent which I respect that I very much. Um, but we've also evolved other ways of getting to oh, higher alcohol concentrations. Absolutely. Right? And that's so, what I mean. That this But is, it is special. It, this I, is I, Jim's I don't deny passion. that it's special. This is Jim's passion where there's a lot of stuff. Like if you meet Jim, he's an incredibly – he will hear you out on anything. He's a very down-to-earth dude. But there are – like these are one of those things where he's like, no, we're going to go do this. We're going to figure this out. We're going to do this. And that's – to me, that's admirable that he's – 
stayed true to that. Yeah. Yeah. One last one before we depart you for the evening. When are you going to review a second gen Mini Cooper S? Um, <laughs> well, I think Foster Eber has one. We'll do one. We'll find one eventually. We'll tackle that thing on the, you know, I want to, I want the Miata driving experience, but I want to pay three times as much for right. repairs and I want the turbo to cook. Yes. Right there, bro. Yeah. I don't want it to last. No. And I want to lose at autocross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. I want to lose to a Fiat 500 of Barth. And be less respected in the automotive community. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you know, well, in this, yeah, like, yeah, to be respected in a Mini Cooper, you have to have a JCW, mm -hmm. which is JCW is John Cooper Works, is this independent guy who took a thing and then he made this. So in terms of it's beer, it's like this, some yeah. other guy's take on, on this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the stereotype of knows what's up. Yeah. With extreme foul yeast and that's, we wouldn't if there weren't thermal vents and we didn't discover all these archaeobacteria in thermal vents, there wouldn't be PCR, there wouldn't be a modern biotechnology industry. So yeah. there's a lot of shit out there to discover for sure. Cool. And I would say, well, they eat sulfur generally. Uh, I would say that's a good way to to end up. There's yeah. a lot of beer out there for you to discover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't all come from the Boston Beer Company. Mm -hmm. No, Oddly but, but enough, that, thank you for bringing your own Some of it comes from Akron, it. Ohio, and some yeah. of it comes from, uh, 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 Top and Glass is in Decora. Is in Decora, Iowa. That was a good beer. That was a very good beer. Decora. I should know that. Yeah, Decora. Northwest, Northeastern Iowa. So, yeah. I had a great time. Mini yeah. Cooper's had a great time here. We had some awesome beers. Changed my mind. We had some terrible uh, beers. I I was uh, not a big we, fan. We could of the go manga. into that to, to if you if you want to take a queer reading of an automobile. <laughs> Something I'd love to do, which is a le legitimate term in uh, sure. literary theory called the queer reading. So is Mr. Uh, Bean? Was Mr. Bean? Where does he figure into there? It's I really don't know. Mini. It's too late to figure that out. We'll <laughs> Mr. Bean is ace, right? He just has the teddy bear, and he's oblivious to another <laughs> flirting. I, I don't know. I think he has Peter Pan. So why, why am I this? <laughs> <laughs> he has Peter Pan so for sure. Yeah. He yeah. also has a teddy bear. Right? Yeah. So. It's yeah. like the wholesome idiot, yes. which is this weird British thing that I. Yeah, Barney Fife. All right. Sure. Come on. Yeah. But he was the he was the confidence without authority. Which is one of the funniest, like caricatures you yeah. can do. Yeah. Right. If I pretend like I know what I'm talking about and have no idea what I'm saying, The Office. Yeah, it's that's Michael super Scott. Yeah. Funny. yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, you wearing a woman's suit? No. <laughs> Where are the pockets? <laughs> there. You know, there it? are a lot of different ways to negotiate it's a contract. And mysterious. <laughs> mysterious. Mysterious. No, that's what's mysterious. Is the rear pockets don't have any holes in them. Mr. Bean is Mr. Bean is a supremely sexual being, and I. Don't... The man got his head caught in a turkey. <laughs> he's he's literally a caricature. That's his entire persona. <laughs> that's it, Gromit. Suck me <laughs> off. <laughs> All right. Wallace and Gromit are fantastic. It's oh, good God. to have your dick sucked by a dog. Of course, I'm just doing Nick Mullen. Yeah, <laughs> doing that's, a good, that's a good Wallace impression. No, I'm just I'll doing Nick Mullen. Wallace. I love Wallace and Gromit. What good is a dick suck without a little bit of cheese? Dick cheese, Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrible. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, yeah. good night. Thanks for watching. Thanks, friends. Oh, and thank you for everybody who donated the Super Chat. We'll spend your money wisely. It's probably going to go for the uh, the sh uh, AT shuttle project. I have some video I need to release uh, for the people who signed up for our alerts on our new website, regularcarreview.com. Thank you to everybody who donates on Patreon. You're helping this channel exist as a much larger channel than it really is. Thank you for Ben McElwee for bringing us a plethora of beers. Thank you, Tom mm -hmm. Nix, for bringing us uh, right, more beers from Iowa and lending uh, science explanations for how things are actually done. Thank I enjoyed you. listening to what makes this special because I did not know how fucking complicated it really is yeah. to achieve what they did here yeah. without modern technology. Yeah, it's very impressive. Have a good night, guys. Goodbye. Good show.